And we are live. Hello, everybody. I am Tim Child of Mecca from childofmecca.com, and we are here with our cavalcade of hosts and guests. We're going to start off by going around. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> wait a minute. You're not me. You didn't even troll the accent. Wait, what? Damn oh, wait, that's you. you. I'm here. Quick. I'm Josh. Uh, okay, you can exp you can explain, Tim. <laughs> oh God! Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to Gumba Talk. Uh, I am actually Tim, the one and only Chad of Mecca. Uh, welcome to episode forty-seven. Uh, we have a wonderful guest, Mr. Model Making Guru Fox himself, with us today. Uh, but we are going to be trying something a little bit different with this episode. Normally, I kind of handle intro and main hosting duties, stuff like that. I'm actually going to take a back seat on this one, and we're going to let Josh. Uh, be master of ceremonies today. So this should be fun. So you guys are in for a treat. So without any further ado, Josh, take it away, brother. Hey, everybody. So this is a monthly Gundam show where gun we talk about model kits and Gundams. Gundam. So yes, this is, yeah, I was purposely saying it like that. Um, yeah. God damn it. <laughs> God damn. Um, yeah, okay, so just like normal, we'll, um, everybody will go around and introduce themselves, uh, let anybody know who doesn't know who they are. So let's start with Simon in the UK. Hello, I'm Simon in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, and I might throw to... <laughs> we're we're going to need a second volume on that one. <laughs> Maybe a third volume. Uh, and, um, and what about Tim in the United States? Hi. How are you? It's good to see you there. Hi, Tim. ASMR. <laughs> I've got some trouble where I can do that. Ooh. Uh, All right, that shit is that. It's, that shit is just weird. I don't care. All right, so Man. hey, what's going on, guys? Tim, the one and only out of Mecca. Uh, yeah, that's it. That's it for me. I build, what if I get like kick-ass gun to models and shit. So. Tune in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on my live streams, and we we kick some ass. So there you go, boom, done. Let's go. <laughs> I'm picturing that you get like somehow you just get um, we get a lot of views on the, that section of the video, and then like next week, Tim, you're doing your normal stream, and then you're doing this ASMR stream, and you're like, I'm making like a thousand dollars an episode, and, and you're like <laughs> you're like a slave to the content or slave to the viewers, <laughs> slave oh to the God. algorithm. Wouldn't that Probably should be weird ASMR though? Like, it's a good way to make I, money. I, I do not get that stuff, man. I don't know. I, yeah, I just don't yeah. get it. It's weird. Different different strokes, I guess. Yeah. <sighs> Tell me about Let's it. Some pickles in the next episode. <laughs> oh. Oh, because of the because of the crunch. I'm like, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Mm, yeah okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, Zach in Korea. Uh, hello. <laughs> um, hey. I had a good, I just want to tell you guys that I had a really fun night last night spending four and a half hours recording my review for the uh, Master Grade Excess Gundam. Yeah. Oh, so, no. Not too thrilled about being in this room right now because <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, no, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. It just took a long time. Uh, but no, uh, I'm, I'm pretty good. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> Do you ever get to a point where you just, where you're like for that four hours, you were like two and a half hours in and you're like, I, I'm about to just not review this thing. Do you ever get to uh, that point? Because I, I mentally prepared plenty. I knew it was going to take a long, long, long time. So I, I was you mm. mentally prepared. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like it's torture. That's awesome. <laughs> I knew it was going to take a long time. Something. Yeah. The thing is, like, is yeah. it actually four hours of content or is it just four hours of two minutes of content you're doing over and over again? Mm -hmm. No, it was uh, because I had to. I had to show it as the S Gundam, and then I had to trans transform the S Gundam ah. with transform state, and then I had to take the kit apart and rebuild it as the XS Gundam, and then show that, and then show, and then transform that into the G Cruiser, and then show that. So, oh, good. Oh, man, <laughs> from now on, looking for HG. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> talk about, talk about slave to the content here. Jesus, mm, right? man. <laughs> yeah, well. So it's okay. Yeah, just it's, I mean, it's a big kit. It takes, I mean, Simon, I know you built it not too long ago. You know, it's, it just takes a long time to just build the kit, but then after that, yeah, even the whole review process then took a really long time too. Oh, yeah, jeez. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll save the guest for last. My name is Josh. I'm from Australia. Hi, 
And Windows. Fox, I'll try it. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and all that stuff, and I sell my artwork on joshuadera.com. Um, but I'd like to welcome Fox. A big welcome to Fox. Thank you for joining us, buddy. Hey, Thank you very much. Hey. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. I'm so Fox tell people... On. Yep, go for it. Oh, no, go on, sorry. No. I was going to say, tell people where you're from. <laughs> I'm Fox from the UK, from Model Making Guru. Uh, I'm a model maker. I've been for like 30 years, and I know approximately three things about Gumpler. I'm going to try and wow you prove... like today. <laughs> you I was going to say, we're going to prove that all those three things are incorrect that he thinks he knows tonight. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> now, what you, what you were just saying, Zach, also apart from the fact that your stash behind you makes me feel better about my stash, what you were saying about the XS makes me feel much better about the Cesarbi. I'm in the middle of denubbing and sanding. Taking forever. Oh. Mm. Oh. I've not done the, the Cesarbi. This is my first Cesarbi, and it's like, oh, it's taking forever. It's fun. Uh, but... Excuse me. Excuse me. It, yes, I've yeah. noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I have to do next, the titanium version of that. Oh, I don't envy you that. Yeah. I don't envy you. Oh. you get no sympathy from me. Oh, <laughs> no, you have all my deepest sympathies then. Just, oh. Uh, but they, they redid, the, they redid all the molds on it, so Zach, so now it's all undergated. Don't worry. Yeah. Oh, they mm. didn't. Yeah. They did. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm thinking. It's like, hey, we, we always, and I was just thinking, like, we always usually end up wanting to put out some titanium version of our Vercock kits, so should we do it this time? Nah. Nah. Yes. I picture them all with, like, a glass of sake, and they're like, should we? Nah. Yeah. And then they're just drinking instead of changing the, the molds. I mean, you have to ask the question, does it actually yeah. cost them more to undergate the sprues? I'm sure it doesn't. Like, yeah, I can't imagine that it does. Yeah, uh, so hmm. why do they consistently do non-undergated kits and then plate them? And it's like, well, yeah, first of all, you're going to spend money on a plated kit. It's just never. Get, I'd love the Fenex, mm. but it's never going to happen. Yeah, mm. yeah, I, I don't know. And uh, the, on the other side of that, I don't know why the undergate kits that don't need it because the under undergates honestly are really annoying. They're more work mm. because mm. you have to like mm. go at it twice. So yeah, I I really hate undergating, but then you have the opposite problem where the parts that need it aren't. So I don't know. Yeah. I did, it's one I did of those secrets that I wish we knew. Yeah. Mm. I remember when the plated Fenex first came out, and I was like, I would so just give my kidney for that, but there's no way I'm going near it. Not because mm. you can't anything with that mechy plating. You can't do anything with it. It's just sadness. Mm. Mm. <laughs> it's just sadness. It's just sadness. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you like get given it free and you just go, uh, and you're just oh. depressed and sad. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a refund of free? <laughs> uh, um, okay, well, let's go around and we'll um, go through what we've been building. Um, I haven't actually been building anything since the last episode, so I'm just going to skip me. Um, so I might jump to Simon. Simon, you've been what you've been working on. Can you jump to somebody else while I go and get it? Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't actually have anybody. <laughs> um, Tim, you want to go? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually have yes. something to show today. Yes, cool. So if you guys have been tuning into the live stream, you've seen me kind of working on this guy. <clears throat> the uh, highly customized um, high mobility Zaku here. We got the double shoulder uh, shields with the, you know, two missile pods and everything. We've got uh, the backpack parts uh, from the Briarland Custom. We've got uh, waist and feet from the Sananju Stein and a fully scratch built mother of all heat hawks. Oh, um, man, I need to recast that heat hawk. Uh, you know what? People oh, have yeah. been asking me for that. So I don't know. It might be a thing. Um, but uh, we've got, you know, reshaped kind of head on the, um, you know, visor on the head. We've got uh, goof custom sh um, uh, armor chest pieces. And uh, the backpack is from a Gelgoog Master Grade 1.0. And uh, yeah, man, so far this thing is looking pretty badass. This is part one of two for uh, my G current GBWC project. And uh, we'll see if we can get it done. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So <laughs> there's always, a, I always have a good backup though with uh, airdrops. So. Uh, oh my if not gosh. this, th if not this, then that, you know. Good, so. good backup. It's a killer backup. Oh my <laughs> god! Thank you. When you, when, you put, when you put that on camera, then the first thing that came in my mind was just the phrase "absolute unit." It's just, oh massive. yeah, it's awesome. well, 
see that's the thing though like this is this is part one of two there's going to be two mechs in this project and this is going to be actually the smaller one of the two um the uh I forget you're doing two <laughs> yeah dude the, and totally custom too and the, and the the second bigger one is going to be this amalgamation of um gogu 2.0 with sazabi verka legs um bits of sananju stein and uh yeah just awesome pointiness so <laughs> they're gonna be going at it it's gonna be fun awesome it's gonna be a lot of fun oh my so, gosh uh, well yeah good times and in the backpack are those little yeah. uh, are those little mounting points for um propellant tanks or anything or they just look like that you mean um what on the backpack on the lower part of the backpack yeah, are oh, those, back are here? those thrusters? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those uh, thruster bells will go in there. I just don't oh, have them mounted yeah, right okay, now. Cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. So on on these parts here, um, these have thruster bells in here on these pods. And then if you've ever seen the Briarland, these big kind of wing binders here actually are massive, just thin kind of thrusters themselves. So not only does it have boost this way, it has boost this way and then pff, diagonal. So yeah, and also from the legs and everywhere. So this thing can move, basically. <laughs> so. I heard you like thrusters, so I put thrusters on your thrusters. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> Yo, dog, I heard you like thrusters on your thrusters. So we put thrusters on your thruster. Yeah, so you basically that. Yeah. I mean, they, call, they don't call it high mobility for nothing, right? So uh, <laughs> it's good stuff. But that's what I've been working on, man. That's cool. Oh, man. Um, oh, okay, Simon, you're all set. Well, I'm going to follow that up with an arm. Which is a good-looking <laughs> arm, though. Mm. Which is just uh, the arm of a GM Sniper 2 Master Grade at the minute. Um, I'm just trying out some new paint style method Ooh. majiggy on it at the minute. So, that yeah, gradient. Nice. Man, yeah, bring it back up and hold it up there again for me. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You can't see it that well. <sighs> I can see yeah. it pretty good. Oh, it looks nice, man. Yeah. It's getting there. I mean, this is just kind of like the first test to make sure that um, it looks okay all together. And then it's just a matter of um, doing the weathering next. So, yeah. My what are you end up doing for the... the... Oh, go, Fox. I was going to say, my ears pricked up when you mentioned weathering then, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've picked up a lot of tips from your from your channel. <laughs> Slap it if on. If anything goes wrong, I'm going to blame you. <laughs> what did you end up doing for the modulation simon like what base colors did you do or anything like that um i ended up well i tried i tried three different three different methods on spoons here just to see what would work and i ended up going with i think it was a, a base of the the um kind of the middle tone first so a base of a middle tone, then a shade, then a highlight, and then over the mm. whole thing again with the same middle tone. So. Oh, to like to lessen the contrast a bit. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it. Because yeah. it was really, mm -hmm. really contrasty before. So I thought, yeah, let's try and filter that out a bit, and mm -hmm. yeah, it turned out okay. So that's the good thing about like filter shades and coats over the top. You just go a little bit, and you go, oh, I'll just add a little bit more, and it's like fine tuning it, right? Yeah, that's it. That's it. You've got to be mm -hmm. very careful not to kind of overdo it otherwise you've just lost all the work you've put in so was it was it all airbrushed or was it oh yeah it's all airbrushed um there's a couple of bits like the like you know just the details here on the on the elbows that are just hand painted in because i mean who can be bothered to mask that no. <laughs> tim hey man yeah tim would yep. yeah tim can <laughs> tim will mask everything to unbelievable precision so oh yeah <laughs> Uh, you like Tim like builds a whole arm, articulation, everything, recasts it as one single piece, just so he has to mask all the parts. Yeah, right. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh man. You know what's funny though? Like uh Simon was was mentoring uh mentioning filters and everything, and we had kind of the we have the the group uh hangout last night mechanism and um uh, Phil build stuff. He was on there and he's into like the minis and everything like that. Right. And I learned something last night that in that world, uh, the, the, the term glaze is kind of the same thing as filters. I didn't know that. So mm. you learn something new every day, right? Mm. Huh. Yeah. Wild, right? Yeah. It's just, there's so many, 
synonyms out there, but different terminology for for both worlds. But it was interesting. Can I, like, can I just say to my followers in the chat, I've been here what ten minutes, and they're already talking about painting miniatures. My job is done. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I mean, I'm not into it, but I I, just, I was just like, I'm sitting there and I'm watching him, you know, paint these little things, and I'm like, wow, that's really cool. And then he brings up glaze, and I'm like, what's he talking about? <laughs> you know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> had to had to get the uh, the direct terminology, so I thought that was pretty neat. So there you go, hmm. learn something. I guess you, that's like with pottery as well, right? You put the glaze on afterwards, and it's a different that's kind of what I thought. Yeah, coating and stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm -mm. Mm. Um, okay, well, um, Fox, maybe we should save what you're working on for when we kind of get into your part of the show. We really talk to you. Do you mind saving what you're working on? That's right. Yeah, yeah no, sure. no Okay, sweet. What's, um, what's Zach, Zach working on? Zach, what's, what, what have you been working on? Um, I have like three different kits that are like prepped, ready to start with painting. So I kind of need to get onto that. But this is the thing that I recently finished. I think you know, I showed you guys last time a little bit, but it's done. Yeah. It's been in the contest for yes, which it didn't win, but uh, it's <sighs> in the place for a third, and the voting's done now. But they haven't announced if it won, so it either won third or fourth. Hmm. But That's good, yeah, it's yeah. fine. I I didn't show it. I mean, aside from I think in last month's episode, I showed it like not quite finished for like a few seconds other than other than that like i haven't shown it publicly at all because i didn't want to uh, to have any sort of like unfair advantage in the contest mm. public voting that's fair enough mm. yeah uh so like when i like after like after it was kind of out of uh chances to win i finally posted a couple pictures of it online uh yesterday or something and a bunch of people were saying like oh thanks for not not showing it beforehand, not turning into a popularity contest, basically. So mm -hmm. mm. it's cool that people uh, like appreciated that. I guess that is real cool. Be me though, because mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it didn't win. <laughs> you stuffed up, Zach. Jeez. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. Uh, uh. It looks really good. The 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 model at the front, it being all in white, contrasting with the green, it looks rad. Yeah, yeah. I didn't. Yeah. I mean, mm. I didn't really think about that point uh at first i just thought it'd be cool just do it opposite but then like mm -hmm. later looking at the photographs of it yeah it is really cool i thought if they were exactly the same color scheme if you saw a picture of them together they would just kind of like blend together too much so mm -hmm. yeah looking at the photographs yeah, i think it was a worked out that was a good choice that you're supposed like, to say that was your plan all along yes plan mm -hmm. for that <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no yeah yeah, I, li I like it. So, yeah. turned out cool. It was a, it was a thing that I just I thought I'd just kind of slap together. Ended up spending a lot more time on it than I really expected, but yeah, it's all good. And now I have other stuff to work on. So yeah, I have uh, things that are prepped for painting. Is uh, a HG Barbatos six form kit that I customized a little bit uh, and. The uh, Pacific Rim Obsidian Fury kit, that one as well. Just want to uh, quickly paint that one up, as well as the uh, Ultraman, uh, Ultraman uh, versions. Which one? Is it? Was that the uh, 7.5? 7, 7, 7 7.5? This one? What is it? 7.5. This one, this Ultraman 7.5 kit. Uh, so yeah, those three are all prepped, ready for painting. So I'm gonna be painting those up in the next, next. But aside from that, I this is just something that I recently acquired here. So this Ultraman kit. Oh, what? Wow. This is the <laughs> one six scale, so it's much oh, longer. Yeah. And I ones are are one twelve scale. Oh. So this one, I don't know exactly how big it'll be, but I guess like something closer to like a perfect grade size or something like that, maybe. Did you say it was a I kit mean, or? Oh yeah, it's a, it's a kit. You know, the, you know, the box makes it look like it's like some like high end like just figure or something like that, right? Mm. But yeah, it's just mm. like a model kit. Oh right. Uh, and this is the version that has like the big claw arm things. Mm. <laughs> what is that? What is that kind of retail? Do you know? The price of it? Yeah, it was like 
60 bucks or something like that. Very oh. affordable. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It's okay. a little more expensive than that. It's a, I mean, it's heavy and large box. So the shipping was also, I don't know, 30 bucks or something like that as well. So mm -hmm. shipping costs a little bit. But yeah, pretty cool. Yeah. You're going to do a review of that down the track? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, cool. Man, it'd be interesting to see how it pairs to a Bandai kit in terms of just like color separation and assembly and stuff. Mm. Yeah. And uh, I, I mentioned this in my video uh, from Shizuoka, and we'll get into talking about Shizuoka more later, but uh, just while we're on the topic of Ultraman kits, uh, I never, like, looking at the uh, Kurobukiya's version is coming out later this year, and like seeing the pictures of it online, I didn't really like the look of it all that much, but then after I saw it at the show, I was thinking, ah, I really like the way that it looks. Uh, it doesn't have the LED gimmick in it, so it so in exchange it has more articulation in the actual stomach, so it's actually can pose better than the Bandai version. The Bandai version mm -hmm. can't really pose that well, although it looks nice. Uh, so now I'm thinking like I already checked out Bandai's versions of the kit. Now I'm checking out this this one six. I'm just got like Ultraman. Ultraman. <laughs> Ultraman Fever this year, like 2019, it's going to be Ultraman year for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Ultraman kids all the time. But uh, the, the, the designs from the new anime for that are really cool. I've never been into Ultraman before in any way, shape, or form, but these new designs are really cool. I thought when I when I first saw the designs when they were first shown, I thought that they were done by uh, Katoki, but am I wrong about that? I, I thought have no that, idea. I thought yeah, I look a bit Katoki. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they? Definitely look it. Yeah, they look it, right? So yeah. I, don't know, I guess maybe not. For some reason, I was thinking that they were, but then like a little later when I was doing like the actual kit reviews and I was looking into it because I wanted to mention it in the review, uh, it's like, oh no, it's not by Kotoki. I really thought that it was for some reason, but eh. mm. yeah. So <laughs> that's what I'm working on. Like <laughs> um, well, the. the do you feel like going into the news, Zach? Tell us yeah, about why not? Uh, yeah. what we got. Yeah, uh, I got a bunch of stuff pulled up here. So mm -hmm. let me present the first. And I'm sure if anybody hasn't seen Zach's Shoes of Oka videos, um, you got to check them out. Um, mm -hmm. My number one favorite is the third one when you're in the, like the um, the <coughs> model, model club hall where you're just going up close. And so we're seeing all these kits that we've been following on Twitter for like the last year or something like that. Man, I was mm -hmm. so jealous watching that video. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I like the bit where you hadn't noticed that Majin Karaguchi was still behind you. Oh yeah, <laughs> that, was <laughs> that was great. Yeah, yeah, he was just kind of—he was always just kind of like lurking around. So I, I didn't notice him at first, but I saw him later on. When we were going around. He was just like kind of like standing off to the side by himself. It was funny. The, the uh, Gooch. But anyway, the, uh, the first thing. Lonely Gooch was lonely. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought this would be a better page, but this is a. The main like announcements here from the show. I thought this would have pictures, but it's just a list of links, so that's not very useful. Uh, but and a couple of things I know I didn't pull up, so let me just uh, let's just look at this one here first. So if you saw my video, you saw my reaction, <laughs> first reaction to the Penelope. Man, uh, your reaction was fantastic. It was so it, genuine. <laughs> it was very surprising. I, I mean, I know it's a big suit, but the kit is very large. It's a pretty big HD kit, uh, and like just like you can't really tell that much from the pictures. It's not like very obvious, but just like and because like uh, Bandai's booth honestly was not really well done. It didn't really look that good. Like their presentation wasn't very good. Uh, but the presentation for this was good because it was just there and it had plenty of space, just empty space around it, so you could really get a good look around the kit, like just by itself without anything around it like distracting you. So. You could just see it there just by itself really clearly. And yeah, it was pretty impressive, mm -hmm. even though, I mean, it looks like a total mess, but it's really cool in the fact that it looks so messy. <laughs> it looks like a total mess. <laughs> and I assume that you're able to take off all the outer, outer armor. What's the what's the name of the base Gundam? It's Odysseus Gundam or something Z? like that? Xi? No, no, no cause C is a different form of that. Inside oh, of really? the is a... Uh, so Odysseus, I think is the, I think that's right. Something like that. Mm. I assume that you can do that if you want to have it less massive, but I like it. I think it, like you know sometimes stuff can be too crowded, but this is too too crowded. Mm. So like it's past the line, so that makes it kind of cool again. <laughs> I think it looks cool. I, like it anyway. I know a bunch of people reaction. 
back. What's that? <laughs> it's a full 360 and gone from cool to too crowded to cool again. It's exactly yeah. like something that, like a movie that is, it's so bad it's good kind of thing. Mm. Right. It's so busy it's like good. Samurai Cop. Yeah. <laughs> is that a real movie? It's a real movie, yeah. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> like the Room. Oh, The Room. The room. Oh my gosh, The uh, Room. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so like on the flip side, I wish, I mean, again, there's there's no photo of it on display here. See, this on the opposite spectrum, this kit was a brand new, like big surprise kit thrown off of the show. And the, the way it was displayed, it was displayed like right in the middle of like a bunch of other kits. Like it wasn't a very like fitting display for showing off a brand new master grade like this. Yeah, it was like they weren't celebrating it. Hey, yeah, it's like, yeah, we also got this new master grade coming out. You know, it's one, it's really pretty. Stuff. That is, that is yeah. an excellent. I'd have, I'd have some of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm totally buying that. I I love this thing. Yeah, I've, actually, I've got the HD of the live concert version to build that um, my friend Paul bought me. I've not touched it yet, but uh, yeah, I need to get that done. But that looks mint. Mm. It does look really nice. Seems that they went uh, along the design lines similar to the uh, the Freedom 2.0, kind of very mm. edgy with all the details and everything everywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so it should match up with that pretty well. Honestly, I kind of wish that they wouldn't have. I, I liked that fine for the Freedom 2.0, but I kind of wish they would have stuck more to like anime accuracy for the design of this. Because I do, I really like the design as well. But this particular take on the design, I'm, not, I'm still not totally sold on. Mm. Um, Man, I, I also, wish this was out like a few months ago so I could use this in my current project. Yeah. You know, yeah. oh, perfect. This would have been yes. perfect. Oh, we've got some felt cloth. Yeah, and that's a big yes. red flag for me too. That uh, like with the Deep Striker had the yeah. shoelace, shoelace cloth. The shoelace <laughs> for the hose. What a bizarre choice. Not, so not a fan. Like what? What material in real life is that meant to be representing on a big mecha? I don't know. Yeah, is it like velour, scale Vel velour, <laughs> velour. <laughs> the velvet <laughs> cable. Pro Bowl Six now come with real velour. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I mean, we can expect plenty of variants of this. There's a, mm. a, f a few. And then I, th I think that they can make the uh, a goof ignited from this as well. Yeah, so oh, really cool. As well, based on the frame. I think so. Uh, so it'd be cool anyway. Uh, and the sand rock, not really particularly looking, to, looking forward to this all that much. Not really a big fan of the TV version mm -hmm. design of the sand rock, but. I'm sure it'll be a solid kit. It's such a it's such a like '90s kit, right, or late '80s look to it. Is that oh, yeah. I guess when it when the show came out? Yeah, it definitely yeah. has that mm. '90s alternate. But it seems a bit lifeless. I don't know why. Yeah, yeah. you're right. Mm, you're right. Mm. And man, those those mm. front skirts. Just we've said it before, but I'm like, I, I need them flipped. Yeah, yeah doing right. my head in. Yeah. yeah. Really goofy looking, and the, like the little tiny little jewel there on the front of the chest is so goofy looking. Mm -hmm. Well, and the, <laughs> the big steam steams well. right down the arm it kind of shouts at you too, you know. That's, mm -hmm. that's it. Because mm -hmm. they're right there in the highlight of the shot, just on full display. Like, oh, hey, look at this oh. feature of this seam down the arm. Oh, damn cool it, the work you put to do here. Be because of that, I I'm gonna guess that that's a uh, uh, molded in kind of line mm. to hide the mm -hmm. scene but yeah mm, kind of wish they would they would have done it a little bit different way <laughs> oh man yeah <laughs> uh but yeah and also no sign so far of it. it's going to have the machine gun because i don't think it like uh kind of wing cannon guys if there's any of them in the chat know much better than i but i'm pretty sure it won't include the machine gun because it didn't have it in the in this part of the anime i think but i don't know yeah, I have no um, clue. Yeah. So it might be mounted really. to the back skirt. Huh? Yeah, I said it might be mounted to the back uh, skirt. You never know. Yeah, that's a good point. That's true. Yeah. And that's it's true. so small, it's like you can't see it past mm -hmm. everything else, you know? Yeah, very possible. Uh, this is just a small thing P Bandai kit of, uh, what is it, the Dodai Kai uh, coming out. It's pretty cool. I actually quite like this as far as mm -hmm. uh, um, different, what are they call base jabbers go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stealthy. Is it just the base jabber kit by itself? Yeah, and the uh, the base I would assume is also included. Yeah, but yeah so it's 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 it. uh, 
So, and I like this too, just because it's a uh, Zeta era. So that I, I think you could, I, again, I'm not sure on the lore exactly, but I think you could be able to use this like with all the new advanced Zeta stuff that's coming out. Mm. Uh, so anything that can be used with advanced Zeta stuff that looks cool is uh, exciting. Yeah. Look at that. Look at those yeah. two friends yeah. just hanging out. Yeah. Gundam friends. <laughs> <laughs> just two guys and they're having a good time. Is that like the future of Uber? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Future Uber. Um, Wait, which one's paying for it? We'll split it half. Oh, uh, oh man. <laughs> Give me five stars, guys. Uh. Uh, all right. And this is also a new P Band <laughs> thing that was on display at the show. Uh, Conroy's version of the Echoist Type HD. Uh, Jagan, and basically it looks the the bazooka looks like exactly the same as the one that comes with the HG Hyakushiki, and it looks like they just got kind of new legs for it. So mm. kind of basically like what they did with the HG P Bandai Jesta kit from Narrative Version, how they like the cannon, how they had the, the tripod cannon for that. Mm. The cannon was just taken from the uh, Rizel kits and they just basically had new parts for the legs of it. it looks like the same thing basically they're doing here with this one and talk about 80s looking mm -hmm. that yeah. on the top of this cannon <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah not too into that it's like here you have this like really modern futuristic sort of looking version of the jagan there and this really 80s style Mm -hmm. up in there. It hasn't got much detail, is it, on that? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, yeah. I'm sure it's the same old mold. And that HG Hyakushiki kit with that, you know, it's mm. pretty old. So, yeah. That's also not too exciting. Uh, but this thing, uh, I want to take a look at this. It has uh, the MG V2 Assault Buster wins first place in the P Bandai web voting. So, plan oh, what's with that? More. So, it's a. Uh, Voting for what kits to be reissued oh. <laughs> for some reason, even though I'm pretty sure this has already been reissued as far as I know, or at least they've done quite a few runs of it at the start. But they had a, a vote to choose which one to be reissued. So that one, second place is the uh, the uh, advanced, what is it it's called? Enhanced Double Zeta Gundam. Mm. Enhanced. Uh, I think it's got like just a little bit length on the shoulders and yeah. toes and stuff like that. Just mm -hmm. slight different molding changes. Yeah. Uh, Pale Rider, Pale Rider, and uh, the, what is that, Gun uh, Krieger. Yeah. That's a cool kit, yeah. actually. Mm -hmm. but, so I just thought that was interesting. That, that was the kit that won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, two Pale Riders, man. Everybody loves that. Uh, yeah. This also I just thought was just kind of fun. We had, uh, I think we talked about this last month, maybe that uh, they were putting out all like the special baseball team versions of the HG Gundam. I didn't know they were doing mm -hmm. doctors as well. So apparently there's going to be some special limited uh, baseball team themed HG Zaku kits coming out as well. If you're into collecting that kind of like limited collector stuff, this is all out for the 40th anniversary of, of Gundam. So. Kind of cool, like collector's item kind of things. Mm. Carp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> where, where is this team? Uh, Hiroshima. Hiroshima carp. There you go. Is it meant to be like the Hiroshima fish? Is that what it is? Like carp? It's just the name, baseball team name, I guess. Yeah, okay. Hiroshima's baseball team is the carp. <clears throat> uh, this uh, this is not a new, new kit release, but just uh, new... Uh, portion or new thing here, new book, uh, which I thought was really cool, of uh, Gundam of the reboot of Advanced Zeta. Yeah, nice. that was really cool. Uh, nice. Black Black Rabbit had a dream. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! Well, how do they do it so well every time? It makes I it. I mean, it makes total sense going back to the uh, uh, Watership Down references. So, yeah. uh, oh, I, right. I forget. Yeah. Uh, Right, right, right. So it's a cool title, and for some reason, his is looking very slim here. Yeah, not he is. I mean, like the torso, especially, it looks smaller. Mm. Something about mm. it. Definitely. Yeah, the head's the head's bigger in proportion. Mm. Mm. He's been on the been on 
day slimming down a little bit. Yeah, he's yeah. still got the legs though. He's still got those those calves bulking out. Yeah, the mm. uh, mm. quell legs there on a it's, or it's basically a quell essentially. Yeah, a hazel head. And I like I like the quell in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's pretty cool. All uh, right, this also not gunpla, but this is really cool. I think this uh, looks pretty awesome. The uh, X two version of the metal build crossbone just because that gun looks pretty dope oh yeah it's pretty cool looking looking forward to some uh chinese company making kit versions of wait, wait, wait. hold on hold on go back to the previous image yeah what the hell <laughs> oh the yeah crossbones knife foot yeah oh, yeah that's cool, cool one, yeah i have never seen that before is that actually a thing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it's in the, the x1 all the crossbows. Seriously? Yeah. Cross yeah. Mm. I have never seen that before. Yeah. <laughs> Took me a second yeah. to pass actually what's going on in the picture. I was like, oh. <laughs> it's, it's a, yeah, a puzzle <laughs> pose. Uh, oh, man. I, only, only the crossbone, you guys. Mm. Yeah, it, 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 that's one Gundam with uh, gimmicks out the yin yang. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, telling you. Front skirts are like uh, anchor chains, and he's got the. Like uh, what are they called? Cross brand or something? His like stuff things on the side of his arm that fold out, like, crazy stuff. Yeah, the knives are like the hand knives are uh, stored in the back of the leg, and apparently mm -hmm. like the knife blade can extend out this foot or something. So, how does the mm -hmm. ankle move then? I don't, dude. It's science. It's like a, it's like a Wolverine physics things. It's like, yeah. <laughs> how does his wrist move? Like. Doesn't he? Cut gonna, it's going to be a parts form, is it? You're going to have to take it out and then pop it off and then put it on. And yeah, right. <laughs> uh, I, I would just say very well, thank you. How does this form? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, this is great. I love it. That's awesome. But hey, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, some Chinese bootleg company making uh, plastic kit versions of these because they're cool design. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool takes on them. Mm. Oh, all right. Um, what was it, G frame? Uh, this is something that uh, is coming out. Apparently, going to be the full armor Gundam, the Goof Custom, and the Gundam G04, actually. So, pretty cool lineup, actually. Huh. G frame. Uh, I think I talked about that last month that I'm in the process of painting my G frame Sazabi, but not much has changed on that. I set it to the side. I haven't made much progress with that, but cool little candy toys. Um, Oh, this is also the first uh, volume of Zaku 2 mini kits. So more like uh, candy toys, but these will be really cool, I think. Uh, I'm not sure how big they're going to be. Maybe it says on here somewhere if I can find it. Uh, ah, here. usual 75 millimeters, so seven and a half centimeters tall. Not bad. Yeah, those would be cool. Paintable. Uh, yeah. yeah, for sure. So these, I expect, will probably be pretty collectible, kind of like the uh, Zaku heads, the Exceed head. I think people will probably be wanting to collect those and paint them up. We'll see a load of them on Twitter, getting mm -hmm. painted in all sorts of different colors and everything. So that'd be pretty fun. So HG, the or uh, sorry, uh, uh, origin style Zaku's, Shar Zaku, the regular one, and the uh, ability type. And I guess this weapon set will probably be a separate thing as well, I would imagine. So one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Different sets for that. So those would be pretty cool. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seven and a half centimeters. Is, yeah, it's decent. That's like the mm. same size as those mini kits that were out uh, a few years back. I can't remember what they're called now. Something with the nations, one of those little tiny ones. They mm. are great for paint. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. Mm, cool. uh, we got this. I just wanted to take a look at just the box art for this. I think I'm pretty sure we talked about it before, but it's the Big Nagina two coming out this month, uh, actually. This week, this Friday, or yeah, this coming Friday, I think, uh, this coming week. But uh, it's pretty, pretty wild design. Mm, yep, <laughs> needs um, a bit more red. Yeah, I think we hired yeah. a new artist at Bandai. <laughs> <laughs> I I like this more than the original Vigna Gina, so I'm actually planning on getting this uh, and doing a review for it and checking it out because I, I passed yeah. the original one, but this one, I don't know something about it. It's, it's more interesting than the original one, but. Mm. Certainly got flair. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Uh, that'll be out. Let's see. Uh, the crossbone we've we've talked about 
before, but I don't know. Have you guys looked at it too much more or anything else? I just still can't imagine how tiny that um, skull is going to be because even on the master grade, it's so yeah. little. Did you see at, at Roka in my video, they had like a magnifying glass? Oh, I think I actually. I loved I that. Yeah. Did, did you see that in the video? I saw, I saw that in a video. I remember seeing yeah. a post on Twitter or something before you got there. And I'm like, yes, they have a magnifying glass. Yeah. <laughs> for, for displaying like the parts for the head. It was magnifying glass. Man. Uh, all right. Uh, model bingo. Yes. Model bingo. Is, yeah, model bingo is making the uh, one four hundred scale inlay kit, which is supposed to be coming oh. out soon ish. But it looks like this is going to be their next project. Is making the uh, is the Hazenthlay two Hazenthlay raw Hazenthlay two. Yeah. Uh, so this is what's the scale for this? Oh, it's going to be uh one forty four scale. So it looks like it's using the HUC uh, wound work kit as a base. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of wound work parts in there, not many, but you need to use a wound work kit here for this. It's a shame they didn't make it as a full kit because that's kind of that kind of sucks to have to basically scrap your Bandai wound work kit to use half the parts, if that. Yeah. Kind of wish they would have just made a full kit, but it looks pretty good. I'm actually not sure if I like this more than the original. There's like already been a resin version of this kit out before. Uh, it's a full version, a full resin kit. Uh, this one looks like probably maybe has like more articulation maybe built into it. So like, but I don't know who's really going to be caring too much about posing this. Uh, anyway. I'm getting the cold sweats thinking about resin. <laughs> <laughs> Have you done much resin, Fox? Uh, I've done a few small resin, simple builds, but resin is my nemesis. It's more like... <laughs> <laughs> I've never tried yet, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's a kind of whole different set of skills that you can learn, but it's whether you want to, that's the question. Mm. <laughs> uh, but off of that, then let's go to oops, uh, go to this next year. This is a Bandai's version. Yes. That's coming out as just uh, this one looks better. And all honestly, the resin kit obviously is more detailed, but I just like the look of. A Bandai's version of it better, I think. Mm -hmm. I cannot uh, believe we're getting this. That's so rad. Mm -hmm. It is. It's almost unbelievable, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anything yeah. advance of Zaya, it's super. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the the couple things that we got, like getting a master graded Hazel, like that was not too like hard to believe. Mm. But the wound war was a pretty pretty surprising, and mm -hmm. this like even more so. So yeah. Mm. It's, it does kind of make you wonder as how far they're really planning on taking it. It's like mm. going with this different stuff because you got the primrose coming out as well, and this, and there's a lot of different my, variations. My guess is these just sell like crazy, right? Like we love them, let alone people in Japan. Oh, mm. I, I mean, you would imagine so, right? Yeah, mm. I guess so. I mm. love this yeah. thing. Mm. Yeah, it is very cool. And speaking of which, here's the primrose. Uh, just on its own, so it doesn't really look like a whole lot, but <laughs> basically it's just the, it's the key that you need to making a ton more different variants. So mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw this the other day and I'm like, oh, Primrose, cool, I've heard Zach talk about this. Wait, what is this part? Is this like the shield or the engine? And I didn't realize that that's all it is. Yeah, It's kind of yeah hard to make out. The main body of it, though, basically makes the torso that you need for all the different versions of the Hazenthlay. So this torso here is is kind of the most important thing really from the primrose and the gun a lot of a lot of different variants use that uh, that cannon so go back to, back to the photo. sorry go on sorry folks i was yeah. gonna say uh, see I'm, this is unfamiliar territory because i'm not seeing the anime at all so i don't know these suits but that looks i i want to i want to build and paint that yeah i don't know what that is but i need, I need it in my life good yeah. taste <laughs> yes it's just uh, that's, what, all, that's what happened to me one one time in a model shop, I was walking by, and I'm like, what is the hazel? And I'm like, look at those. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. Mm. I'm in the back of my brain. It's kind of thinking, I'm going to guess it's something to do with the hazel, but my God, that needs to be in my stash. <laughs> <laughs> I like the asymmetry shoulder pad thing. That's cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. And and like the center of the torso, can any of you guys see like a cartoon dog, and he's got his eyes, yeah. and then he's got his tongue panting out? I yeah. can't that. And, oh, God, yeah. oh God. and a nose. He's got a little, he's got a little nub, nub nose. <laughs> needs a little tiny <laughs> pair of eyes, sweet. I need, I need that. Is that the hazel? 
Is that a base kit, Master Grade Hazel? I, I'm guessing. Or uh, this yeah. is HD. Uh, it's HD, yeah. It'd be the Hazel Custom legs, but in the Hazel 2 backpack on it. The backpack is from the Hazel 2. Um, and the front skirt arms that's from the uh, advanced hazel so it's basically it's a bunch of stuff in there wow but the yeah. kits are the kits are really cheap for what you get these high yeah, grades, they, yeah. yeah. It's surprisingly cheap yeah mm. the standard release uh advanced zeta stuff is, is pretty cheap so yeah i think i've got various ha i've got the hazel and various bits on my on my t need to get these kits list anyway for a while oh, yeah. mm. i need to get around to it Ooh, yeah. that's nice oh, oh, combined with chunky i like chunky chunky's good man Chunky's great. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I love it there without all everything on it. Just mm. how slim the torso is, but it's got the really very thick legs. Yeah, just, it's just a building with a head. I like it. And a dog's, <laughs> face, a dog's face on the front. Now I can't not see that. <laughs> I know it's so dog face. <laughs> That's terrible. Uh, this one was another one at the show. This was like barely noticeable. It was like tucked between like the army of Magonat kits. And like a bunch of other like P Bandai Master Grade kits and other things like that, and like in between that, they just had the RG Talgies three just kind of like stuck in there. Oh. So sorry for it, but that's coming out. Not really a surprise at all. It was really only a matter of time. But uh, like with the Master Grade, it's also coming out as a P Bandai kit. Still mm -hmm. cannot wrap my mind around those tree trunk legs. <laughs> <laughs> Not Never thing. skip leg day, folks. No. Well, I think he should have skipped leg day. Uh, toothache. <laughs> well, I don't know. Man. He needs some. He needs some calf work, definitely. That's that's water retention. That is. I'm sorry. He needs to go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, you want to yes. get out about more, a bit more exercise. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, a couple, couple more things here. There's kind of a lot of stuff, hmm. obviously, because of she's welcome. But uh, uh, just just a plated version of the SD. Nightingale, it does look nice. Uh, I highly recommend this kit, whether plated version or not, but it's a really fun SD kit. I really enjoyed uh, painting mine. So definitely. How much does something like that go for? Uh, 4,000 oh, yeah. and around. So yeah, yeah. The, the base kit, I think, is 1,600. So yeah, anything plated usually is around double the original price. So mm. yeah. Uh, that's this is with tax. So I think uh, minus tax would be like thirty eight hundred yen, something like that. Uh, this also really cool. These were on display at the Shizuoka, and really interesting to see. It's just different box art. It's like special versions of uh, the HG, the Origin Zaku kits with this different box art on it. But really cool. Man, I could see being a sucker for this. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Yeah. When I saw these on your video, and I wondered if they, if I thought, well, is this like old releases that just re-released, like old eighties, huh. early eighties kits or something? What the artwork's fantastic. Yeah. So just so early eighties is great. Mm. Mm. It's just uh, Aquara. So I'm not sure if there's anything different with the actual kit. This photo is making me think that the head is a little bit different. Does it have those two it? panel lines? Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think the original one does so maybe mm. this kit has like one new part for like the top of the head basically mm. because that really would be or maybe in like the front of the head too without the hoses so maybe it has a couple new parts for the head and that's it basically mm. um so yeah fox i think they're just putting old artwork on a new model kit um, yeah. for that kind of like old school aesthetic yeah mm -hmm. but it's yeah. like it's, I, I was wondering if it was like modern artwork made to look like the old artwork but they actually had a sense of perspective that they didn't seem to have in the 80s. man how did they i it still dumbs me when the, their legs and stuff and i'm like didn't they know it looks weird what i don't get it yeah <laughs> they probably had like one guy back in those days and it was like can you just paint that yeah that's a bit of a yeah. <laughs> yeah and he was a one-eyed one artist guy. so he didn't actually have depth perception in real life anyway so he had no <laughs> yeah it's come a long way in 40 years Mm. <laughs> so, uh, I'm not sure what, there were there was two of them though at this, on display at the show. And this this post only has this one of them, but I don't know. There there was another one as well, uh, and of course the RG New Gundam. Well, I think we talked about that last time as well. But mm -hmm. yeah. how this look in person? Yeah, fine. I mean, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fine. Exactly the same. Yeah, exactly the same as it looks. Eh, no big uh, deal. Mine, Whatever. It just looks like an RG version of the new Gundam. I don't know. I, as I said last time, I'm not really that into it to be honest, personally. But if you're a fan of 
RGs and or a fan of the new Gundam, then it does look good. Mm. You have to wonder it... how stable in the fin funnels are, though, because on the Master Grade, they're all over the place, aren't they? So mm. Mm. It looks like yeah. the clips are about the same size, a little C-clip, as the Master Grade one. Yeah. So maybe it'll be a bit bit stronger. Mm. Uh, yeah, I assume, yeah, because of their smaller size, they weigh less, so it'll probably be pretty fine. Mm. Uh, Glue it. <laughs> yeah, you can assume, but everything does look really nice. And it was really cool to see it in the display right next to the crossbow, just because of this size difference, how much bigger it was compared to the other one. That was fun. Uh, all right, last thing. This is oh, another event to say stuff. This is um, Hazel 2. But I wanted to read this post because I've heard, and I, I didn't look very closely at the show, but I heard that it was just a parts set. So it's actually just a parts set for the MG Quell. So it's not going to be a full kit. Okay. Uh, so like you, you need the MG Quell as a base kit, and it's just going to be a part set to turn it into a Master Grade Hazel 2. So kind of different from what they did for with the uh, uh, Hazel, Hazel Custom kit. Um, but I think Getting that chunky vibe again, I like that. Oh yeah, yeah, it's nice. Isn't it? And those backpack things, oh man, so yeah. chunky, boxy. See, ah. see, as a as a weatherer, chunky's better for me than smooth and curvy, unless it's a mm. you know Zaku or something. Oh, awesome. Yeah, uh, here based on the price, you can tell uh, this sixteen hundred or it'd be like one thousand five hundred yen for that. You, oh. It's uh, most certainly just a part set for that. So basically, you just you know, like two runners, basically. Uh, Backpack parts and head parts, and that's pretty much it. Maybe these parts that go onto the top of the torso. That's pretty much it. And the beam rifle. So a couple of things. Two, three runners for that. Uh, to change, uh, maybe the, the crotch part as well would be a little bit different. So I a few things know. different on that. Mm. Uh, I've never built the Master Grade Quill. I have one, but I haven't built it yet. Have you, any of you guys ever built it? Oh, it's, yeah, I mean, it's, it's your typical early early master grade it's basically yeah. like a re yeah, yeah, yeah maybe even a sub re for yeah. today's version it's not great i mean it has a, a nasty seam line right down the middle of the of the forearm and everything so mm -hmm. you know it's as bad as you can probably imagine a uh sure. you know early 2000s late 90s kit to be it looks good though. I like the way that it looks, the proportions and everything on it. Yeah, proportions are really nice and, and you know, design aesthetic for the, the time that it came out was really, really, you know, quite nice. So, you know, you put a little love into it and it still stands the test of time. So, you know, I just need some TLC, but you know what? That's scale modeling, man. By TLC, <laughs> you mean slight swearing. Yeah, oh, uh, extreme <laughs> swearing. Come on, now. Why, why, stop, why stop on slight? Just go full Military or naval, we have to qualify. Yeah, yeah. Start to throw things. It's it's just fun. It's fun for the kid. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. And there was more, if you can believe it, at uh, Shizuoka. But check the videos if you haven't. You can see more of that stuff. And those are kind of like the main things. I have yeah, to man. say, when I, watch, when I watch your videos, Zach, it's the first time I've seen someone do anything from Shizuoka where you actually see above the crowd. So you don't just get the, the person I view. Uh, uh, you go upstairs. And I actually looked at it because I've never had a sense of how big the show is. Mm. You go upstairs and film it. It's like, oh, it's not that big. Mm. It's kind of the same as shows over here. Because you always think it's this massive. But it's, it's actually just like a kind of standard show. So it's interesting to see it from mm -hmm. in the air perspective. Yeah, that was, you know, that was my goal. And I just wanted to show like the experience if you were actually to go there yourself, rather than just focusing only on just the model kits. That'd be kind of, I just thought that it was just kind of boring. So I just yeah, also, you shot film with the snacks, which was the most important bit for me. So <laughs> <laughs> the snacks, and I have one more video coming out. This is uh, it's my B sides video where it's just a bunch of video of everything else other than the show. So like hanging out with Ryan and the Hubbyco guys and Lincoln and other stuff. I'm just like going around. She's okay. Yeah, how, how was that? How was hanging out with Ryan and, and Lincoln and those guys? <laughs> if how how messed up did you if get? If you're dude? friends with Ryan on Facebook, then you can imagine. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> uh, or obviously, obviously, if you know him, if you know him in person, and Josh knows him, so I mean, mm -hmm. you know what he's like. <laughs> he's fun <laughs> and he's a really fun guy. Yeah. 
Nice. Yeah. He Can likes it. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's oh. plenty of getting hell yes. And <laughs> All kinds of everything. And, and all, all, kinds. all kinds of everything. All kinds of all kinds. Not, not. So, oh man! It's funny how like the his crew, the other uh, guys that are with, they're like there with them, or they're they're all like right in time with them. When he, whenever he gives the hell yeah, they're always whatever they're doing. The oh, hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> oh man! They're a good oh, team. Gosh. Yeah, we've we've got our GBWC coming up in maybe like two months or a month and a half or something. Yeah. So that'll be back back in my home country, and I'll be getting copping earfuls of it and loving it. It's great. Yeah. Oh yeah, nice. yeah. yeah. They like just got back just today into Australia, right? Mm. I think mm. so. Yeah, big long trip. Yeah, yeah. For like uh, two weeks or a week. Week? What's the band now? Two, two I think weeks. he said. It. I think he's uh, he's been over there for eighteen days. Yeah. That's crazy. Oh gosh. Wow. A couple days before the show and two weeks yeah. after. So. Yeah. All but, business, yeah. man. He, All he business. Said that he's always just there for business. So it's the first time he's there to just kind of uh, be able to just kind of relax and kind of hang out around Japan. Oh, I thought, I thought this was all business for him. I didn't know that uh, yeah. he was taking like a vacation and stuff too. Yeah, I don't think he was doing any more business uh, as far as I know. Oh, wow. Okay. Was, Good for him. Uh, I think he said he had never been to Osaka because they were going to Osaka after Shizuoka. He said he's always just going, they're going to Tokyo or Shizuoka. Uh, but he said it was his first time going to Osaka. So I think they went there for a while and then they went to Tokyo uh, before coming back, I think. so. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, it looks like they had a lot of fun. I had <laughs> fun with them for the very short time that I was there. But it's basically like 48 hours. In country, pretty much. Um, were you like dead after you that trip? Uh, not too bad? Yeah, I was pretty tired. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. uh, going there Friday morning, I had to wake up at like three a.m. and then leave here like three thirty and drive like two hours to the airport and then go to the airport, flying to Tokyo, and then from Tokyo I had to take. Uh, two trains, one one from the airport, Narita Airport, to actually in Tokyo, and then from Tokyo to Shizuoka on the Shinkansen. So, yep. uh, and on the the train into Tokyo, we were just, just stopped dead on the tracks for like an hour waiting because there was some accident. I don't know exactly what happened. They didn't say, uh, but there was apparently some accident that we had to stop there, and there was like maintenance guys i see like out the window they be like running up and down the tracks like checking something on the outside of the train or something i'm not sure but i know that like train suicide is a mm. oh, well, i didn't say that but didn't really want to yeah i i don't know it that's what it was but i know that's common enough that i that's what i was kind of guessing but you know, i don't know to be sure uh could have been something that's wrong with the train or something who knows mm. but uh we were yeah we were just stopped for like an hour <laughs> it's very strange. yeah it's a very strange thing to happen on the train in japan because usually mm. or ben or just like have any knowledge of them you know that they're like very on time yeah so, yeah yeah it was pretty interesting experience but yeah i finally got to shizuoka by uh like well one or two two o'clock something like that by the time i got there so been about 11 hours traveling before i actually got like, from my door to actually to shizuoka mm. it's not too bad but is mm. and then uh had to go and do all the filming and stuff and then and then after that then had to go hang out with ryan so it was a very <laughs> <tiring day. laughs> uh, well man i know you got like it was a, a sponsored trip and stuff but i gotta say thanks for Thanks for just going to a bit of extra effort. Make sure to film all this stuff because I loved it. Not being able to go, um, especially this year, seeing all you guys over there. I'm like, damn it, that would be so good. So I appreciate it. It was really cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It, I was on the fence, you know, because it's just, just such a short time and I didn't really know. Like, like I said, I thought if I just went and just like just covered the show, and that's basically mm -hmm. like what every single uh, like blogger in Japan is doing so there'll be tons of photos already showing all the new stuff at the show and then probably think Japan is our, always does their videos in there so I was thinking like is it really worth it to go and just basically cover everything that the show that everything like everyone's gonna already see anyway mm. uh, so yeah that's why I wanted to kind of 
try to show more of just like the whole experience of of going to the show as much as I could just to make the video a little bit more interesting. Hmm. Videos more interesting. And yeah, it, it worked out. And like a lot of people, if you saw the comments on those videos, a lot of people like uh, noticed that. So that's good. Yeah, it worked yeah. out. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think right. part of it is because you're not coming from this perspective of somebody trying to sell their retail outlet. Yeah. But, you know, obviously, name ones are like, this is all the stuff we're going to be selling. So, but you're like, here's the show. Let's just experience the show as a, as yeah. an entity. That's what a couple of people said, basically. Like, it was cool to see, like, from the perspective of just a, a fan. Yeah. Mm. So, it was a lot of fun. I don't know if I'll go again. But yeah, honestly, like, the club rooms was by far the best part of the show oh, way way more oh, interesting than seeing like the new stuff like seeing all the new stuff is cool and especially like if i really didn't have time to look around at all the tools but if you had the time to go around and look at especially like all the tool stuff and everything like that and the paints and everything uh that's also really quite interesting because there's so much of that there but it was that would have just taken a long long time i could have spent a whole day at the show just like going through all the tool booths because they're all like there set up and they have the guys there and you can like test them out and everything we did test out a couple of like new God Hand tools uh, there at the God Hand booth, um, and yeah, it was really cool. You could spend a lot of time just looking at all the tools, but the definitely the club rooms, just seeing all the awesome builds, uh, was by far the best part of the show. And there was a <laughs> literally what I showed is probably, uh, you know, less than a quarter of what's there. <laughs> uh, Tiny amount of the, of the club room. The, just the stuff that I was the most interested in personally, but oh man, yeah, wow! And and everybody sitting behind the model that's like they're the ones who worked on it, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Like some of the some of them weren't there at the time, yeah. like gone out or something like that. So like a couple of times, like I wanted to ask a question about one of the bills or something like that, and the, they, the guy said oh, he's not here at the moment, like that. But uh, yeah, of course, they're all. Japanese and I, I think a couple of the guys that I talked to like could speak a little bit of English but if you want to go there and like you want to be able to ask a couple of questions to the guys have someone with you that can speak Japanese or learn some Japanese but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah that that's that is one cool aspect about it going there but if you don't have that any Japanese ability then you can't really quite take advantage of that but still it's still cool just to see all the works and everything and there's um like, like you said a lot of builders like a really like popular well-known or like uh, pretty big name professional builders there uh, like i think probably the most well-known one at least like for us would be like wild river the guy that does those really amazing dioramas mm -hmm. uh, oh, yeah. the diorama of like the the zock in that uh, like wet tunnel you know that mm. yep mm. uh so, and I I wanted to check about this. You guys remember that there's that episode of Plamo Tsukuru, uh, where the guy makes that uh, that gym. I'm pretty sure it's a gym, if I remember correctly. It's like walking through like the river in the jungle. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I wading that, through. Is that this same guy or not? I'm not yeah, sure. River, yeah. I think so. Just based on like the, the same goal, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. But I wanted to ask, like, hey, aren't you in that episode of Plumas Guru? But <laughs> <laughs> hey, are you that guy? <laughs> are you that guy in that thing? Yeah. Just you know, like a back to that yeah. fanboy mode moment. <laughs> Didn't, it's been a while since I've seen that episode. And later, later on, I was uh, I was looking online. I was looking on uh, YouTube for that episode, and I couldn't find it. So. I don't know if if any of you guys watching in the chat can find that episode. Send me a link. So I want to check that. Uh, yeah, I've seen it ages ago, so I can't remember. Uh, can I, can I just that 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 that? What's that? Sorry, I was going to say it's on a playlist on my channel. Look, I know I've seen playlists of the different episodes, so I need to to mm. check that particularly. Uh, but yeah, the other thing that I wanted to mention, of course, was really cool about just uh, just meeting the different people there. I met Naoki. That was awesome. Uh, yeah. like, as soon as I got there, uh, he had just he was just like coming out, and I was like, I'm pretty sure that's Naoki because he has a really unique style. Mm -hmm. And so I was not quite sure, but I thought, with there's no, I'm sure there's no one with any style that's quite like that, so it must be him. So the Club Rockstar. 
<laughs> oh, aren't, aren't you Naoki? I was like trying to talk to him in Japanese at first, but then after we talked in Japanese for a little bit and my, we were kind of reaching my limit very quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. Then actually he could speak some English, so we actually kind of spoke some oh, cool. in English. So we, we just talked five or 10 minutes, not that much, but uh, I asked him about his new line of uh, new series of stuff, like designs he's working on that like our kits coming out, uh, like the mecha kits are being made by Aoshima and like the humanoid kits are being made by Kotobukiya. So it's kind of cool. Like the two different companies are, are handling the same property. Hmm. Oh, uh, I never would have thought cool. that'd be a thing. So it, yeah, that was cool. And like, uh, I talked to him a little bit about like his, uh, weathering, uh, mm. style. Cause uh, we were talking about, uh, I was telling him how I liked his weathering style, how it's uh, really good for the scale. You know, mm. it's like really super fine. Uh, and he, and then he was talking about how there's, he was going to be doing a demonstration on Sunday when I'm not going to be there. So it's going to be his demonstration there. And, uh, and then also, while we were there, th that was on Friday. And then we were there on Saturday at the Guy Notes booth, and you saw my video the uh, uh, with uh, Kawaguchi doing the demonstration there. Uh, that demonstration was supposed to be Naoki, <laughs> I guess. Uh, oh. When we went to the Guy Notes booth at first, and we were just kind of talking to uh, the guy there, and he was saying like, he mentioned something like, "Oh yeah, Naoki's coming by later this afternoon." Uh, to do a demonstration. So then we went back there at the time and we were just kind of like waiting around and I don't know what ex exactly what was going on, but uh, he never showed up. But then Kawaguchi was there, so he did a demo. <laughs> so, I love uh, it, Kawaguchi gets up and you're like, God damn it! And you're like angry. <laughs> like, yeah, what's the B team they sent over here? <laughs> but, but it was awesome, it was, it was so good. Like he was just doing like a really simple like demonstration basically of uh, dry brushing, but the way he was doing it was really interesting. He, I'll just summarize basically. He was using a uh, guy notes enamel paint to dry brush on the little uh, notch king kit. One of, uh, one of these, one of those, those little guys here, this little oh, yeah. mini tank kits. Um, and uh, the way he was doing it like, it's like uh, dipping the brush, uh, like getting some a good amount of paint on it at first, and then like taking all the paint off, wiping it on the tissue, just getting off, off all, all the paint, all the paint, all the paint, until there's like almost <laughs> nothing on the brush. Uh, and then his like, he was dry brushing. Usually when you see people dry brushing, you're doing it like kind of hard because there's so little paint on the brush. You kind of had to like kind of go at it to get any paint off the brush onto the part, but he was doing it super light. Like he was like, just really breezing the kits. And it was like, just really highlighting the edges super nicely. It was really good. So, and then, uh, then he's like, anyone want to try it? And he was like, passed it to me for me to try it. So I got to try it. Yes. I didn't have any video of it, unfortunately. I should have passed my camera to someone to take a video, but yeah, I tried it and it was fun. And then he also showed like, uh, how to do like uh, scratching, just like on the edges, like uh, chipping and like, uh, like a scratch just across like, the front of the armor. And then like, uh, and then doing that like with enamel with a brush, just like little bits, and then going at it with uh, just like a sharp, like pointed Q-tip to just kind of like uh, sharpen, like sharpen the edges of it. I guess is the best way to to put that, uh, just to make it like really fine mm. detail on uh, the painting, all the scratches on it. So and then, like using multiple colors, you know, for doing your chipping. To simulate the different like levels of paint, yeah. This, this so, is all holy words for me. This the weathering and the chipping and the oh. yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was really cool uh, to to see that stuff, and so it was it was a lot of fun. So okay. it's, yeah, definitely like it's kind of funny how like the main crux of the show is to show off all the new products and everything, but that was like just like okay, that that stuff's fine. Was, like, everything else was like the much more enjoyable experience of the whole thing. Mm. Like meeting different people and also met uh oh we didn't get to meet max watsonabe he was there and like we kind of said hello really briefly but he was really busy at the time and he looked and like link said this because link's friends with him but i i could tell even just like just looking at him, he looked super tired oh he, he was just totally beat. like he we said hello and like that was it and like he, he went off to go somewhere but uh also met uh hasagawa i don't, I don't know his first name mr hasagawa Behind yeah. the models, <laughs> 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 really briefly, uh, and yeah, so it's just cool chance to like get to meet some of these people. 
Yeah. Yeah, that sounds so good. Wow. It does sound good. Mm. Oh, gosh. Interesting. And, of course, yeah, Lincoln was pretty cool to hang out with as well. He's a good guy. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay, well, man, we'll jump on over and um and get to talking to Fox. Yeah. Um, Simon, you wanna you wanna take over, ask some questions to whatever this guy wants to talk about. Sure. <laughs> food and ATV, that's, that's, it. that's it. Oh man. I guess. Um, okay, go. You just, just want to introduce yourself and let, just let people know about what you do and. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, YouTube I'm, channel and things. So. Yeah. Um. What's an hour into show, but I'm Fox from Model Making Guru. Uh, hello, welcome. Why am I saying welcome? It's not my show. Of course, I have it. I've been making models since I was like a little kid, so like almost 40 years <clears throat> now. Um, wow. And I kind of fell into the world of Gumpla about four and a half years ago when someone commissioned me to build heavy arms, and I didn't even know what a Gumpla was at the time. I'm like, what? I had a vague. I had a vague knowledge of what Gundam was because at the time, even I would refer to like, um, I'd refer to a, to me, a tape dispenser as a Gundam foot, but I didn't, that's about, I don't know why I knew what a Gundam was, but I kind of, I just called them Gundam feet. <laughs> I didn't have like a massive knowledge. Uh, and this guy asked me to build one. I'm like, okay, I'll give it a try. And I hadn't even built a band like it at that point. So, oh, really? so my first, my first ever Gumpler experience was heavy arms. And oh, I was my eyes, my brain was blown. My mind was blown because I was that a master grade or high grade kit. Or? Yeah, the master grade. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. It, it was. Uh, I, I mean, I I grown up building you know military kits and stuff like that, and this was like, wait, this is actually fun. It takes all the <laughs> <stuff>. <laughs> Yeah. building just as fun as the painting <laughs> oh, man. i love that there's like a main selling line for gundam kids wait this is actually fun <laughs> fun and then i discovered the other part which is you know my all my all my modeling techniques i couldn't use because of the bandai plastic that was a learning curve on a commission build Ooh, that was uh -huh. fun. yeah so um, like what, what's a, what's a technique you couldn't use uh well any kind of washes or any kind of i could you guys all know anyway, but on Bando plastic, you can't really, you've got to be really careful using any kind of thinners. Mm. Yeah. Kill plastic. Mm. And I didn't know this. So I'm like, so I'm building this thing away and bits are cracking and I'm like, uh, wait, what? Oh. <laughs> so I started yeah. doing some panicky Googling and figured out what it was. I'm like, oh, all right. So, mm. you know. I'm yeah. You have to prime it like inside and out. And yeah. And even though it's very guaranteed. Mm. But it was good because I had to learn a whole like new way of doing things that didn't involve like taking a load of Tamiya smoke and thinning it down with X20A and making nice thin washes and stuff. So mm -hmm. that was that was fun. Uh, but then that hooked me completely on, on the whole Gumpler. I, I knew nothing about it from going from naught to 16, like, you know, literally a, a month <clears throat> into, the, into the whole thing. And I was like, this is actually, because, you know, I'm a model maker and I, I, I enjoy the process, but I've always been a painter and a weather and not a builder. <clears throat> so I've never, my focus has always been on the painting. So to suddenly find that the build process was enjoyable, Mm. I'm like, mm. this is like my midlife crisis, but cheaper than a sports car. It's like, wow, this is really <laughs> Welcome to the dark side, years. Fox. Say again? Welcome to the dark side. Yeah. But then, of course, <laughs> after I got into that, I had to start watching the anime a little bit. So when I was commissioned to do that, I thought, well, I'll watch this Gundam Wing, whatever this yeah. nonsense is. Got about four episodes in, and my mind just broke. I couldn't. It was <laughs> confusing. <laughs> So all these American kids that grew up on Gundam Wing in the 90s, I'm like, how did you even follow what was going on? I didn't have a clue what was going on. <laughs> so I abandoned that, but then I watched, obviously, the original, you know, Mobile at Gundam and then Unicorn and everything else. Oh, I just loved it. But I've kind of been away from the hobby for the last two years because I may have accidentally tripped up and fallen into a Warhammer store and it all went wrong from there, basically. Oh. <laughs> oh, just man. going back into it, yeah, the, the Warhammer happened. That, that was the <laughs> thing. That's um, something that, that I try. I try to avoid. I'm like, I can't even just go look at them because I'm worried that's going to happen. Well, well, I've got to be grateful because, in a way, up until that point, I'd never done brush painting. Oh, mm -hmm. now I've spent a year and a half learning brush painting, and I'm like, now I'm going back to getting back into the gun because I'm not. I'm not doing one thing exclusively. It's just I've been out of the circuit for a while. And I'm coming back into it, but I've learned so much doing brush painting now, doing miniatures and stuff that I'm like. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I can start applying that to Gumpler. And this, the build I'm doing at the minute, which is this, this is the Cesabi. Yeah. All of them. <laughs> it's going to be, <clears throat> the, the one thing that always gave me stress as a painter was 
painting it and being able to keep it poseable. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to paint this. Mm -hmm. and, well, I've kind of got to the point now where I'm happy to do a static pose because you, it mm -hmm. just, if it's not, if it's going to go in a cabinet and be a display cabinet queen, I don't need to worry about everything being poseable. So I can build into it a static pose and that frees me up to do so many things. Mm -hmm. So with this one, it's going to be the first gunplay I've come back to since kind of teaching myself brush painting for the last two years. So it's going to be a, it's the Master Grace Azabi, but it's, it's, it's for a, it's for sort of a commission build. So it's going to be a Master Grace Azabi painted to look like the mech suit from Diva in Overwatch. I think it is. I don't play Overwatch, so I don't know. Oh, but okay. in the livery of the Shanghai Dragons. Because George, I'm building it for a guy called George in the chat at the minute. He loves the Shanghai Dragons, so I was building it for him. So I've got a load of Shanghai Dragons decals painted, printed up. It's going to be painted in that colour scheme, and I'm going to weather it. But I'm going to do a lot of brush painting on it because I've used the techniques of it. I'm going to see how it comes out, and it's going to. If I'm going to try, not only do that, but do it in a sort of Borderlands style weathering mm. sort of maybe. Oh. It's a little bit cel shaded, something. Kind of mm. Well, well, that's, well. If you say cel shaded. Um, uh, the what's his name from Borderlands comes and slaps you, but yeah, that kind of Borderlands <laughs> style. What's his name? Randy. I can't tell the truth. Pitchford. Um, yeah, he's. Um, I'm going to try that style. I'm not. I've got to do some testing first because doing the outlines. I'm going to try and use a very fine detailing brush and some inks to do the outlining effects. Mm. Um, it's not. I, I can't guarantee it because I've got to try it on a test piece first. But I'm going to try that. But I'm hoping to get in now. Now I've, I'm coming back with this. Once this is done, I've got the perfect Grey Millennium Falcon to do, and then I've still got a stash of loads of Gumpler that I need to get back into. And I want to take all the stuff I've learned doing Warhammer for the last two years and try start applying that to to the Gumpler. Now I've got this also mental freedom that, hang on, I can just build it in a fixed pose. It's taken a weight off my shoulders, mm -hmm. and I can start trying to bring all this together now. So I've got all kinds of stuff. I've got high new I've got to make at some point. I've got the one I'm really waiting to build is I've got a 160 scale Freedom Gundam, the no grade. I need to do that. It's been on my shelf. Right? Yeah. It's like, like this big. I need to do that. <laughs> Man, that, that build sounds so cool. Those combos of those kind of like three inputs by the by the commissioner. Man. I mean, hopefully it will work. I, I would say I've got to try the Borderlands. I've, because mm -hmm. I love Borderlands anyway, so I've been studying the, the way they do weathering and stuff. And because it's all going to be brush painted, because George wants it to be a bit battered. Because Shanghai Dragons, I don't know if you know, Shanghai Dragons are not the best team in the world. Oh, yeah. Overwatch, they're, they're a bit kind of the underdog. So he wants it to be a bit, you know, broken and battered and beaten. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and I've, I've kind of come to the conclusion over the last few years that my weathering style is, is fine, but not really. I think, Zach, like you were saying earlier on when the Majin was showing you how to do, showing how to do like. Uh, no, you were saying um, Naoki was doing his weathering in scale with the mobile suits. But that's mm. one thing I've not really mastered yet, is getting it to look appropriate. So mm. I'm going to try and practice that, see what it comes out like. Oh, man. Are you going to be filming this one, making videos of this? Uh, yeah, it's going to be a two. I'm going to do one for everybody and one for my sort of Patreon supporters. So the, the build series itself will be hidden away behind the paywall, but yeah. <clears throat> I'll do yeah. the build diaries. But when I've done that, I've obviously got other things I need to do, and I'm, I've got a um, uh, Giro Doga that I've got oh, to do. I did no, the Giro Zulu, the little HG, and my God, that was so much fun. That was brilliant. Oh. I loved it. I didn't paint it. I just built it and weathered it. Mm -hmm. and that was, that, I loved it. So uh, one of my followers sent me a Giro Doga, which, yeah, that's going to get maybe the same kind of treatment, so that would be filmed because that's the master grade. I'm not going to do with the rubber tubing yet, but we'll figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did they do a replacement part for that on the do on the Doga? Did they do like a metal or resin? I don't know if anybody does. I don't think they do. I've not I haven't seen any. Rings with little metal rings. Mm. No, well, no, on the, on the Doga, it's the, it's the little rib tube, isn't it? It's the yellow mm. squishy mm. bed. Oh, you can get, yeah, yeah. you can get, you know, the the high grade builders part sets, Fox, where you just get like weapons and cannons and hands and boosters and yeah. stuff. You can get um, the pipes, and you can get them for. Uh, one 144 and one 100 and it comes with a little okay. bit of plastic and you just get all the little packs like that it's beautiful yeah like the generic so, stuff, you can... like generic because mm. that might be an option otherwise mm -hmm. just have... you can't stand that stuff mm -hmm. but yeah that'll be the do when i get around to doing the doga i'm torn between doing the, the big ass freedom gundam or the doga after i've done the millennium falcon yet so i'm not sure one of the two but yeah i'll be filming those but I can't, i'm just i'm just going through the sanding all the bit stage i've been doing it for a week <laughs> yeah it takes <laughs> It's, so how many how many have you built that Zach? Is it that your is that finished one your second one? The Sazabi? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, this I've built the I've built one of them before, and it's in a very long work in progress <laughs> of uh, with a uh, resin dress up kit for that. So this will be my second time building the Sazabi Burka. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, how many are built? Uh, a lot of them are are built and just back in the box. Yeah. Because I've been looking at other people's builds and thinking, you know, doing video reviews and stuff. And I uh, Robert one eight four did one. It's like I think it had about a three month gap between two of the videos. Mm. I'm like, yeah, that's probably about right. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and do you do a do you snap all together um, first flux before sanding, or you sand all the parts? Uh, no, I my kind of technique is that I'll get because. I don't. It's just the thing with Bandai kits. You can just get all the parts off the tree, off the trees completely. But I get all these little sorting boxes. But I sort them into like left arm, right arm, head, torso, and into obvious little sub assemblies, so that I can go through and I, because I, I have such a terrible attention span, I'd rather get all that stuff done. So I get all the parts off, sorted into trays, and then sand and dean up. And then once it's done, it's done. And then I can crack mm. on with the good stuff. But you do have this big box of hundreds and thousands of parts, and it's like oh. <laughs> I learned to be able to keep myself a kick in the ass to do Trays. it. Trays. Life. Trays are the best. Get yourself like 10 of these. Yeah. <laughs> I've, got, I've, got, I've got three with lids on. And I tell you, if, you, if you've got the option of ones with and without lids, for the love of dog, don't buy the one without a lid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the number of times, if you knock it off the desk and it's got a thousand parts in it, it's not happening. Oh. Yeah. So, great minds there, Zach. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I can't. I can't wait to get it done. It's gonna be awesome. I hope. Uh, I wanted to uh, ask Fox you about just like if from like the video or not so much like the hobby perspective, but just like from the uh, creator side as like a content creator. Mm. Your videos are mostly pretty long uh, videos, and how have you found that? Just like. Uh, reception to like really long format because i know that's just kind of the thing that you've just kind of like settled on long form yeah. long form videos how's yeah. that work? um it's it's a difficult one because i'm all the advice to creators is if you're going to put stuff on youtube make it 10 or 15 minutes mm. because the average viewer won't last more than 10 or 15 minutes mm. and you just don't do that with scale modeling though that's no <laughs> that that's the thing it's like if if you're doing like a review video, then that's fine. If you're doing like, um, here's the kit, let's get it together. Stuff that you know, you know, I mean, your kind of content is fine because your your average, you know, your average length is what about twenty minutes, twenty five minutes, something like that. Uh, less than it's that fine. now. Yeah, yeah. In the early days when I did used to get complaints about it more often. Yeah, but I was pretty <laughs> down now. A yeah, but the thing is, for the kind of content you do, that's perfect. Yeah, um, you know, for, for the majority of the content, you're probably absolutely fine. But you know, the ones where you've done more detailed, like. Um, you know how to do conversions and stuff like that you've taken a bit more time and it's it's kind of i've tried shorter but it just doesn't get it across and I'd, mm. I'd love to be able to do quicker videos but like simon says when you're doing the in-depth painting unless you want say a hundred videos in a build series each one doing a separate bit it's, mm. I, I don't know I've, I've kind of just landed on that long form because it just seems to work for the for the sort of content i do Mm. And what, if, you, if you can say, what's your what's your drop off when you look in your um, like statistics of videos? Do people stay in longer? Um, it's been a long time. I can't. I'm kind of one of those YouTubers that just kind of blindly puts stuff up and tries oh, not yeah. to look at the mathematics behind I mean, them because it's work. too scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can, yeah. I'm just, I'm just do it. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I mean, it's not. I don't think a lot of people will sit there and watch 45 minutes. I think what they tend to do on mine is because I've always make it trying to. I try and make my videos. It's easier with Gumpler than it is with other stuff, but I try and make it cover two or three different things. I try mm. and make sure the titles and stuff always explain what's going to be like weathering this and mm. that. And I think what I find what a lot of people do is they'll dip in where the, the thing they need to know. Mm. Um, because my, my thing is all about teaching. I want to show people a how you do something and B all these dark practices that you, a lot of people, because the thing as, as builders and, and makers ourselves, we don't always realize that when, Average Joe Schmo looks at, a, say, a, a completed build of something. Mm. And they don't have any knowledge of how it's done. To them, it's this magical thing. It's incredible. Mm. But to us who do it, we can say, well, that's this is technique and that's this, and it's not that complicated. So I try to just demystify it to, to people mm. in my videos. And that's, I, I, I've not been able to condense it down. I'd like to because it certainly takes a lot less time to make a shorter episode. But 
Yeah. So I, I think I, a lot of people work at the same time as watching your videos. Mm. So you yeah. kind of found your audience in that way. So. Mm. I don't know if you do that, but like I, was, like I was saying, a lot of them do tend to just dip in. So if they know an episode is about, say, painting the frame, decals, and, I don't know, chipping, they'll mm. just go in and find the bit about that bit. So they'll dip into them back in when they're doing each step, I think. I've been told that a few mm. times by people, that they'll, mm. they'll have the whole playlist and they'll go in and they'll just look for, right, I'm doing decals now, let's go and see how we did that bit. And mm. They'll kind of dip in it, which is fine, because my, my, my big thing is just teach people how to do it and show them mm. it's not as complicated and scary. As they think it is um, and i think that makes it a better resource as well people watch it in five years ten years time or something like that and they go oh, i'm just gonna go straight to the decal part i know i do that yeah. or i'll go back to the video i watched a couple of years before so um, yeah. yeah although, yeah, although yeah. yeah the one thing i never advise is don't go back and watch your old stuff it's just a demoralizing experience <laughs> <laughs> i went back and watched one of my first ones and i think the third word i visited on youtube was um <laughs> <laughs> glorious 480p oh god yeah yes. no, I, think I, I, think I, I think i always started in 1080 i was just past that period when i moved to 480p <laughs> in, in glorious terrible lighting and terrible camera oh god yeah, don't go back watch <laughs> but i think in, in terms of the length though, i think it depends on the content you're doing i think some stuff works really well in short form and some works really well in long form um mm. I mean, you know, God bless Robert 184. I love his work to bits. I love his videos. I do want to, I think he went to work for, did he go to work for Hobby Link? Uh, Hobby Link? Yeah, yeah he's, he's not been around for a long time. But mm -hmm. the one thing that I was never that keen on was the, his 15 different videos when it could have just been like one, 10 or 15. But I understand why he did it and it made perfect mm -hmm. sense. But I've never been into that kind of stretching things out. I'd rather just get to the point. But if people treat mine as a dip in and out resource, I'm fine. But it depends on the stuff you're doing. Mm. Oh, exactly. I know it's some of your painting stuff you used along the form and it works really well. And yeah, I, I, just... I, I think uh, like it just kind of depends on how you want to structure it. Yeah, if you want to chop it up a bunch, it'll make the video a lot shorter. And like you can show like the main steps, which is like kind of what I usually like to do on the or a rare occasion that I do make this sort of video. Uh, like I'll show like just like the main step and then I'll just kind of like how I'm doing it and then jump ahead. But I think the nice thing about the year longer format is that it does kind of show just like the process of it, how like people can get an idea of, okay, here's how to do it. But then here's actually in practice, it does actually take a while and you, you have like this whole long process of this it, aside from just like the main points of like a shorter video. Yeah. They can get like the general idea of yeah. what you're doing in like a couple of steps, but actually showing it for the long haul does, I think give, probably a better understanding uh, in, in the end of. I, th I think, I think the thing for me is that from, even when I first started doing this, I, the way I got my brain to do it is to say, right, I'm sitting on my workbench and I've got my best mate sat next to me and I'm showing him how to do it. Cause I had no idea how to present. I'm like, how am I going to even present? How, how do you do, how do you behave on camera? So I'm going to pretend my best mate sat next to me and I'm showing him how to do it. And that's why you get me painting one part for 40 minutes and talking about, I don't know, cheese or something. It's because I'm just talking as if my, my friend is sat next to me. And that's, and I try and, I try and build a relationship with the viewer that way. And it's, mm. I, I, I mean, the, I, if I did short videos, I probably, and I've, I've kind of started doing this a bit with the Warhammer stuff because of the nature of the Warhammer. And I'm, I'm trying to move back away from that now where you get, and I'm going to paint this and I'm going to paint that. And it's like, something's missing for me when I'm doing that. It's not, mm. it's not, same so i'm looking forward to getting back to the gundam side of it so i can i can have that little relationship again i think i'll still do both but i miss that kind of one-on-one -on -one with the viewer as it were mm. i think people really get into that like we were talking about zach and your she's working videos having the personality and the conversation and if yeah. you chop it up too much it's like okay now i'm doing the wash okay now that's done and that worked and now here and, and done and there's like no yeah. real kind of personality mm -hmm. um yeah i think people really like that mm. yeah and I think, I think, you know, I say, I, I mean, I, I overdo it. So I can spend 45 minutes painting one thing and talking about, like I say, geez or something or television. Um, I think, you know, use that strike the perfect balance. It, it's, it's not, it's not too overdone. You're not having a 45 minute conversation, but you, you get in that relationship with the viewer. I mean, I watch your stuff all the time. I love it. So, and I, I you taught me how to do the C cut. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what you're working on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and when you, I think you're working on your, working on your mega size Zaku and because I was thinking about getting a mega size Zaku and I was looking at the feet thinking that's going to require some fiddling that is. Mm. So, but I mean, you strike a good balance between the shorter form and building a relationship with the viewer. So 
Mm. But there are ones out there where it's just literally bam, 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 fact, fact, fact. It's like, well, it's useful, but it's not, it's not fun, fun, really. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Plus, I'm a complete idiot, so it kind of helps. <laughs> uh, my kind of ethic is if I can do it, then, you know, so. Mm -hmm. So what is your favourite cheese? Favourite cheese has got to be... <sighs> Emmental. Oh, no. I don't know why. I like Emmental. Emmental. It's not really interesting yeah. cheese. Sweet and yeah. mild. Yeah, it's just put a slice of it on your sandwich. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> some kind of meat product. Some Emmental. Sweet. Now, Fox, real quick. Um, here in the States, like, <clears throat> we're a lot of the Gundam guys, um, or builders are starting to go to IPMS events, and the, the folks at IPMS are actually starting to kind of embrace you know the gundam builders a lot and stuff and you know obviously talking back and forth obviously you know there are skill set differences you being kind of unique in that fact you know coming from you know more of an armor traditionalized side of the scale modeling uh genre coming into gundam what do you see is kind of the biggest difference um skill set wise that you've kind of had to overcome um I don't know if there's a, such a massive difference because, uh, I mean, the, the construction techniques, if you're just a snapper, then you just snap things together and stuff, then there's, there's a massive difference. But if you're anybody who works on Gumpler and is the more industrious and, and detailed builder, they're going to use kind of all the same techniques. They're going to be filling seams. They're going to be getting rid of gaps and all that kind of stuff, doing a bit of custom work, a bit of, you know, greebles and plaplate and things. So there's not that much massive difference. I think the big difference is that um, I think it's where you get to – weathering um because is that because of the scale strange that, go on sorry was that because of the scales to do this? no it's, it's strange no. that if if i go to a model show and the, okay this is this is british model shows so <laughs> i'm annoy someone here but never mind i'll take it on my own back um, <laughs> go to a british model show there's always like little local model groups mm. and they have one trestle tables there's always one where there's a table full of spitfires Mm. And not one of them has got any weathering on it. And you look at it and think, <laughs> wow, I did that in 1978. Can you, can you not do a bit better? However, so mm. it just, and it looks terrible. But if you take a gun, a gumpler and it's just beautifully painted, but no weathering, it looks fantastic. Yeah. Mm. It's a whole different way of looking at it. But I think then the problem then is that um, it's, there's not Although there are very talented builders, gumpler builders that, that fully understand the weathering and everything else, there's so many that don't. And it's it's a apart from the fact it's a challenge to paint anyway, because you've got so many interlocking parts and different colours and everything else, if you want to keep them movable. I find a lot of people that are familiar building the gumpler have no experience of the weathering, and that's where they're they're kind of finding a difference. Very true. Um, yeah, I mean, not not as much over here because, like, as you guys, but obviously know from through Simon, it, Gumpler over here is not as massive. Mm. Uh, obviously, in the east, and it's no, it's not as big as in in the US and north of the US, but it's here. We didn't grow up with you know Wing Gundam in the nineties, uh, and we, I, don't th I don't think we've actually ever had any Gundam anime on traditional TV over here at all. Apart from the okay, but channel. we had it on Cartoon Network. Yeah, right. that's like on the back of though, isn't it? So. Yeah, so, so the, you know we've got no distribution. We're not got Bluefin or anybody like that. We've we've oh, just got. Cool. Well, yeah, hey, <laughs> we go. Hey, um, and <laughs> that's about on that one. Um, but um, you know we've got no we've got no built-in distribution here. We've got we do have some stores, but I'll be honest. Over here in the UK, if you buy a gunpla you're going to buy it on Amazon from somewhere in Japan because the problem the stores have here in this country is they have to pay all the import duties and they can't get the discount. Uh, yeah. you know. So That's they, right. they won't last long. None of them last very long. And if they do last long, they're, they're charging a fortune. It's cheaper for me to get something from a little mom and pop store in Japan who'll send me the kit and a little bit of origami. I've mm. had a little origami. Mm. I love that. Mm. Um, <laughs> it's cheaper for me to get that shipped over here and with all the import duties and everything else than to go to a store 100 miles away and buy it off the shelf mm. Mm. Just sad but yeah but that's anyway getting back to the thing i think the big the big thing i've come across is that is that the people that even accomplished builders and painters they're not familiar with the weathering and the questions i get asked a lot about gunpla, how do i weather it yeah i did a, i did a video years and years ago 
on how to weather, really simply weather, uh, a, a real basic weathering job on a gunplay. And it was literally build it, slap some oil paint and rub it off. And I look mm -hmm. at it now and think, oh, it's a terrible video. I wouldn't ever do that now. It's awful. But it, <laughs> Is uh, that the old Whitelin oil? Yeah, uh, yeah, the Starship Phil, the best old pen you'll ever need. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Starship I remember that. But, um, but it's like I was saying way back uh, earlier on when I was saying that we 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 can see, we know how the magic works, so we look at something and we can understand it, whereas somebody who's got no knowledge will look at even the most basic paint job and think it's a wonderful work of art. Mm. I've, I've come across people who are experienced builders and they can custom, the, they can put all custom work on there, they can paint it beautifully, but when it comes to weathering, they wouldn't even know how to do a dry brush. Yeah, which is where Zach, you were about coming in and showing how to do dry brushing. To me, that's like a common sense technique. Mm. But to somebody who's not familiar with it, it's a revolution. It's like, I mean, I'll, I'll show you. It's, it's not, it's not, it's not a gunpla. But <laughs> that's my, that's an Imperial Knight, a Warhammer Imperial Knight. You won't really come out on camera, but well, wow. it's all brush painting. And where there's any shading between colours, it's all dry brushing. Nice. Oh. No, there's no airbrush on that at all. And so to me, it was quite charming to, you know, when you were saying about Majin Karaguchi showing how to do all the different techniques and picking up the edge, because to me, that's second nature mm -hmm. to the point where, you know, I, I'm happy enough that I can take, I can take, I can get a panel. So let's say I've got a, pa a Gumpler panel here. I could paint it red. I could do a dark wash on it to darken it up. And then I could dry brush the red back over. So that when it's finished, it looks like somebody's painted it red and done a, a pre-shade coat with an airbrush, but it's not. Oh, it's dry yeah. brushing. Right. And that's the stuff I love. I love that people don't know because they've never had to do it and they're not experienced. Yeah. They've not grown up building armor or anything like that or anything else. Right. So there's still a lot there that that they don't know, and it's it's wonderful teaching people that because it is a lot of stuff is really easy. Yeah. And they just don't that's know. It. That's it. And well, and it's funny that you say that because that's kind of the the same uh pattern that you know we've kind of see seen here in the states um you know talking to you know kind of your more traditional uh modelers um you know they they come to you know they talk to us about scratch building and and modification you know full-blown modifications and stuff and they're like pff, mind blown when they see you know the stuff that kind of we do on our side but then obviously mirror that with you know what you just said you know we're blown away by you know these little intricate little uh weathering details and stuff like that um and it's just kind of a it's a weird you know relationship that you know the two genres have at this point it's so it's it's kind of cool to hear that you know is the same pattern uh you yeah. know across the pond so that's really cool I think I think mostly it's like the last twenty five years have seen a revolution in traditional model making weathering. That's yeah. why you get all your Ammo by Meg and AK interactive weathering products that weren't there 15, 20 years ago. Yeah. That's really swept the, the traditional model making world. And that's now coming into the Gumpler world where yeah. you know, for Gumpler builders, customizing your kit with clap plate and bits and bobs is, is second nature. Whereas yeah. to a traditional model maker, of course, building say a tank or something else, they wouldn't be that familiar with that because they don't need to do it. Right, right, right. But they do all the weathering that you guys don't normally need to do. And it doesn't always work. I, I burnt out on the Master Grade Full Army Unicorn Gundam. I never I gave it away as a prize half painting because I was building it. I thought, I'm not going to paint it, but I'm going to weather it. And it didn't work. Just didn't work. It looked like ass. I couldn't, my brain <laughs> could not reconcile the Unicorn Gundam, nice and shiny and white. Mm. But when that, it just didn't work. So it's a, cer it's a certain skill set. Yeah, but it's it's nice to see it coming along now, especially you know GWC entries are often weathered and all that, and you see that anyway. But to the, the the traditional builders, they don't they don't need they don't normally need to do that. But it's nice to see. I, I'm jealous of somebody that can build a, a mobile suit and paint it beautifully, and it looks crisp and clean. And I I can't do that. I just can't. Yeah. Do no. It and and to that and to your credit, I mean that is uh, in some respects a hard task to you know kind of achieve because you know like um uh adam savage on you know tested he his one of his favorite uh lines is you know hide the crime so to speak yeah. so you know when you have a pristinely factory floor finished kind of kit there's no place to hide your your crimes there's no yeah, place to hide your cars and fight planes <laughs> yeah your your basics and your your skill set needs to be on point at that at that juncture so yeah i totally yeah. agree totally agree yeah. 
watching you guys, I mean, I've seen Zach, I've seen you do some stuff. Uh, there was one you did was a commission ages ago. It was a purple goof or something. It was, I can't remember what it was, like a Zach or a goof or something. And uh, Simon, I'm, you know, watching you do your builds and the others of you. It's, I love it because I, I wish I could do a nice clean build, but I do it and I think, well, that's kind of half the job. I need to do more. I need to <laughs> do I, my brain's saying I've done only done half a job, so and I can't do it that well. I can't do nice clean builds. Yeah, and Zach, I, I, I'm dead jealous of Zach's matte coats. You just get them so matte. Mm -hmm. <laughs> jealous. Oh, I love, I love that uh, that matte coat that I use. The Mr. Color, that that flat here, the flat clear. Yeah, I need to, mm -hmm. I need to snag me some of that. You can get that stuff over here, but again, it's not a ah. hard thing to get. Mr. Color's actually starting to become more common over here. The whole range, the Mr. Hobby stuff. Mm. Uh, over here, but yeah, I'm so glad it's more available now. Mm. Yeah, I just wish it didn't come mm. in little tiny cans. Big cans mm. Mm. Yeah, that having a, a a solvent like lacquer uh, based, you know, acrylic like that. Oh, you have no idea. You were talking, Fox, a little bit earlier about you know, uh, kind of being you know challenged with, especially with the movable parts. Yeah, man, you use the you use the Mr. Color stuff. You won't even have to worry about it. Because it's <laughs> so durable. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've got some of the Mister Color, Mister Metal Colors. You know, the buffable metallics. Yeah. Um, and see, I can't really use um, lacquers in this in here because this is a house. So sure, if sure, I need lacquers, everybody else in the house gets a lung full of it. So I, so I <laughs> can't. Right. So, but I did use those, and they were because I was I painted them on the frame for my one sixty no grade strike, and I was like, wow, this is going to be terrible. It's just going to scrape off, and no, it's it takes any abuse i threw it it was like wow this is pretty impressive yeah <laughs> it's good stuff good stuff mm. cool yeah. no i as we're getting here close to the end there's one question i i surely wanted to ask uh fox is about the guru portion of the name because I'll, I'll admit I'll, I'll have i haven't watched a bunch of your videos just some here and there when, when i can uh but well, I, I think like, I don't know if you did this on purpose, but it seems like the guru name is intentional because you do sort of have like, uh, you kind of take on the teacher kind of, or not so much teacher, mentor sort of kind of yeah. in your videos. So it was that like intentional with the name or just kind of what's your uh, idea about being that kind of guru in your videos anyway? Um. I I could just sit here and say yes, that was my plan all along. <laughs> um, but no, it was there. But at the time when I first started out, it was when the dot guru domains first came out. Oh, oh uh, yeah, and it, yeah. I, I kind of wanted yeah. to do that kind of thing anyway because it was like that would be relevant because my aim was always to teach. Mm. And it was like oh dot guru domain. Oh hello. Um, so we snagged that, and there was a whole backstory of it was originally the website was model making dot guru. Mm. Mm. Then there was some, let's say, let's say, professional disagreements between myself and some other people. That <laughs> website's now gone, so I got the .dot com instead. But it was partly, it was partly, I wanted to do the teachy teachy type stuff, the, like you said, the mentoring. That was that's one hundred percent my motivation to do any of this. But it was kind of handy that the .dot guru domain came out and that kind of decided the name then. And it because we, I hadn't decided on what I was going to call myself at all. Mm. It was like I, I knew I needed model or model making or something in there somewhere just mm. for the simple thing of google searches um but then the dot guru came out and i was like it's nice about we can have that so it's not quite as romantic as it sounds <laughs> it, was, <laughs> but it, it, it fitted perfectly with the idea that yeah i wanted to teach and i want to i want to show demystify stuff and that's my entire motivation if i can't make a living doing it then even better if i can't then whatever but it's really i wanted to i wanted to See, this is a difficult thing. I don't want to sit here and say I'm so brilliant I can teach everyone. I'm I'm just an amateur. I just I just right, people yeah, about. I don't like want. That. No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't want to sit here and say I know how to do it and I'm going to show you. I want mm. to say I'm figuring this out and I'm not that good, but I'll show you how I'm doing it. And if I can do it, then you can do it. And if I can show you how I've done it, then you know because there's so many people much better than me. Some yeah. in this room, but there you go. But <laughs> it's. Mm -hmm. so, I just, how many hours a week does it take up? Doing your film. How, how many hours per week is that? Are you doing uh, filming and putting out videos and um every day, every, every day. day. This is literally my job now. So 
Mm. <laughs> Wait, is it really? I didn't know that. Yeah, well, um, because of said, let's say, professional falling out between myself and somebody else, mm. um, I suddenly had no job. And mm. I thought, well, oh. if I'm going to make this as a living, this is the one chance I'm going to have to try and do it. Man, that's how so that's how change like that happens, hey? Yeah, yeah. Let, let, mm. let's just, I, I just basically sucked it up, grew a pair mm. and said, let's just do it. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, I'll go and get a job. But if it does work, I'll try it. And it's mm. not really working, but I've not got to the point of, I'm going to get a job yet, but yes, good. I, I wouldn't call myself. I wouldn't call myself a professional by any long means. Of it. I, I happen to do it for a living, but mm -hmm. um, I, I don't know. It's, I've actually forgotten the point I was trying to make now. But <laughs> <laughs> um, can, can, can you tell me a little bit about what it's been like on Patreon? Because I'm not on Patreon, and I'm I'm not. Are any of you guys? Have you got a Patreon at all? You. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah exactly. Yeah. 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 What's your what's been what are the things you like about the Patreon kind of format and how it's been with interacting with your community and giving them things that you only give to them? Because I really like yeah. the model. Um yeah, what's your what's, what do you think of it? Uh it is absolutely fantastic. Mm. It's absolutely brilliant. It's if it wasn't for Patreon, I'd be working in a another office on mm. a behind the desk being a, a telephone jockey. Um it's it's got its downsides. I mean it's I absolutely love the fact that, you know my patrons support me they're my lifeline the downside is of course you've got to constantly give them something as a reward and that's the difficult bit because i'm a one build at a time kind of person mm. uh, even i'll admit they've been lacking for content a little bit lately because i've been mm. doing builds for my sponsors or for you know somebody else or it's a, a reward bill for a patron support or something like that so it's i i constantly have the 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 what's the word the 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 dilemma in my head of giving content for for my patron supporters who I absolutely mm. adore but it, yeah as a, as a way to to support creative types it's brilliant i love it um and I, one day i hope to be able to support people on patreon myself but right yeah. now i'm just I'm, I'm hoping letting people support me but it is fantastic there is a there is a lot of pressure to give the content to the people that are supporting you and that's right because they're supporting mm. you should give them something mm -hmm. it's just quite tough to because if i'm doing something patreon exclusive i'm putting no content up for anybody else and if I'm doing mm -hmm. it for everybody else, I'm not giving the patron stuff. So it's kind of a balancing act. I'm not saying I've got it perfect. I probably mm -hmm. haven't. I do get shouted at sometimes by my patron. But right <laughs> I, could, I, right I, I could imagine that would be really difficult to balance, especially maybe even it gets into the guilt zone. Like, you're, geez, I haven't put something out this week. They're giving me money and stuff. So it feels like this tit for tat owing them sort of thing, whereas a lot of people are just like, no, I just want to support you. Um, if you well, give me stuff, cool. I mean, the beauty of it is that, you know, I'd say most, if not all of my patrons, thankfully, are in that mindset of they're just like, I just want to help you out. I don't need mm. you to provide me with content. I'm not I'm not the kind of content creator that puts something out every week anyway, mm. just because of the nature of it can take me weeks to film a single episode. Um, I've got other stuff I need to do, like, you know, Facebook groups and stuff as well, and other things that I'm doing at the same time. So it's not like I can constantly do that kind of exclusive content anyway. Um mm. But my Patreon supporters are that they're, they're really open minded about that. Like, you know, we want something, but we you know it's like this this Azabi is going to be Patreon exclusive for the patrons, so they'll get to see the full build series. But I'll do little 10 minute catch ups for non patrons, just a little mm -hmm. build diary saying, Here's where we're up to, this is what we've done. You know, you can see the full video. So that's, mm -hmm. the, the, that's the only way I've kind of come around it right now to give everybody something without excluding one party for the other. And it's, it's kind of a balancing act, but it's worth doing. It's absolutely worth doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, like, I know I talked with Lincoln about this as well because he's also he also uses it quite a bit, and he's also like Fox. He's doing like this basically full time, uh, where I'm not able to do that unfortunately yet. But it even from the uh, just doing it part time yet. It's really, and I think it's because of the nature of our hobby and because of the nature of the content that we want to create. We want to create uh, content as like or as a resource essentially. Yeah. And when you're creating content that's as a resource, you want it, everything you make to be available for everyone. It's not like, for example, if we're making just something that's meant to just be consumed as like entertainment, like music or like artwork. If you're like a, a digital artist or something using Patreon, then you can sometimes put out a drawing like something as like a Patreon exclusive. No one's going to really like miss something like useful. Whereas for us, if I like do a some certain tutorial as a, as a, Patreon exclusive thing, and that's something useful information that a lot of people could use. And so it's really hard to decide about that. So that's why, in my case, I've decided not to do any like 
video content as Patreon exclusive things, but but Lincoln does, and his is very much worth it, I think. Uh, but that's just because he's doing it as his job. I can afford not to. Yeah, to... I, I, I mean, I have to be honest, I don't know how you juggle a young family, your job, and all this, and do like 13 <laughs> right. videos a week. I, just, <laughs> I have to take that <laughs> off for doing that, but you're absolutely right. I, I, I kind of wish right at the start I'd not set, up, set it up so I was doing any kind of exclusive content for Patreon. Mm -hmm just because it does become like a, a millstone around your neck, not because you don't want to do it, but because mm. you have to do it. Um, but that's the way I've said it. That's the way I'm going to, I'm going to work with it. Um, but yeah. It's, 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 it's a valuable, it's a valuable, if you're a creator type and you want to be in, in any way independent, it's absolutely worth it. Mm. Um, just get for it. Mm. I mean, I wouldn't say expect to make a living doing it. I'm very, very lucky in the people that support me. I'm, I, I don't doubt how lucky I am. There's lots of people on Patreon accounts far more talented than me, and that they get like ten dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So it's I I will never not be grateful for my supporters. Uh, but yeah, I, I will never expect to be doing this in twenty years' time, living off the income from Patreon. It's, it's not going to happen. But it, it's definitely mm -hmm. there. It's worth it's worth doing it if you want any kind of independence at all. Even if it's just enough to buy the stuff to do the what you want. You know, you might still have to have a day job, but if you can afford to buy. If you're like a builder, if you can afford to buy the kits to then film and then give people the content, it's it's their way of saying thank you, and it's your way of you know giving them something back. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Andy had a good point there in the in the chat, saying that some some Patreon supporters aren't even looking for exclusive content; they just want to just support the creators. That yeah. That's been my experience for the most part, luckily, because I don't really do really honestly enough for them but it's like the you do like the, you do like 12 videos a week i think you do enough content full stop like well, <laughs> but now i'm always the same I, I'm, I think most of mine if not all are just the kind of i just want to support you yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I've been lucky. i don't mind if i don't get stuff and i love that it, i love them mm -hmm. to bits for that mm -hmm. have you ever considered writing a book yeah, but that would require some, if not at least a few photography skills, which I don't have, because you need to take pictures <laughs> as well. Before I started doing videos, I used to do like a blog, and it was like, mm. it, in a way, it was a lot easier because you just do the build anyway, and you just take lots of photographs. Mm. But yeah, I'm, I'm no photographer. <laughs> I, I, I put a disclaimer on my website saying, here's some pictures of finished builds. I am not a photographer. I am a model maker. <laughs> no, don't get the two confused. <laughs> but yeah, it would be, be a... It, It'd be kind of fun, but that's what I used to do. I mean, the thing about filming builds, you guys that do it, I mean, Simon, you'll know, and you know, Zach, you'll know, it can take, it can, uh, filming a build can make a one day build become a two week proje project, mm -hmm. especially if it's full painting and full weathering. So it's writing a blog is a lot easier, but yeah, mm -hmm. but it's not anywhere near as educational, I don't think, as actually just showing it being done. If I want to learn something, I always go and watch a video rather than read a description because I want somebody to show me what to do. That works for me, so that's what I try and do. Exactly. Any, any. Uh, Simon does a really good job of of documenting his builds for the most mm. part. For me, it's it's always any like new project that I'm starting. It's always a question of how much do I really want to show of this or not, just because how much, how long do I want it to take? If it's something that I want to finish in a kind of short amount of time, I don't really want to invest too much into it just like just kind of have a fun little side project those are usually the ones that i don't really tend to make much video content i think for just because it's something i want to knock out without having that extra load of time attached onto it for that mm -hmm. yeah. i think it was actually i will be really honest and um, you know tip my hat here and say when i was <clears throat> trying to figure out what to do for patreon content um the idea of doing little video build diaries i think i totally stole from you zach when you were doing i think a commission build and mm. you're just doing little updates. And I was like, I could do that for people who want my patron. That might work. Mm. So there may have been a bit of thievery from your from your mm. from your idea there. <laughs> By all means, I, I I got ideas from other people as well. So mm. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a hard thing to figure out, yeah. Yeah. I, I had the same thing, Zach, with like because of my last two big GBWCs, like my Zeta and stuff, taking photos along the way, which is really fun. And then the little high grade Stein that I'm doing. I'm just building it, and and uh, there'll be a moment at home, and I'm like, oh, I should take a couple of photos. This would be cool. I'm like, nope, no photos. And then I just get to zone in to just building it, um, and it's a kind of nice change. Yeah, mm. it it is nice occasionally to 
there's there's been times and it's it's more i've had the freedom with say warhammer builds where i can i can i can do a bit of filming and then i can just go off and do a load of painting for like two days and then come back and say right and because i'll be like well, now we're going to paint this bit and then i just have to go off and paint it i don't film the whole thing and to just be able to do that without filming sometimes is really nice because doing this all the time it gets to the point where i've, I've not, in many years i've not had chance to actually just sit and do a build for the sake mm. of doing a build you don't really do it anymore mm. for the for the for the doing the build anyway you don't get that so when you do get that chance it's a real nice little diamond in the rough to actually just sit and do mm. it for the sake of doing it not that i'm complaining but you know it's a reality <laughs> all right all right any any other questions simon oh that's better yeah. um that's about it. I was I was just going to ask is like is there any particular uh, method or technique during any build that you do that you find the most enjoyable, the most satisfying? Or oh yes, yeah. uh, generally I would say the weathering because it's fun yeah. and you can hide all your mistakes. Um, <laughs> it's, it's basically being allowed to make a mess. Yeah, but I think the the bit that I like the most because it's actually really hard to mess it up. It, and that some people, a lot of people disagree with this, but for me, it is water slides. I love water slides. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> at, le at least for me, and I'm not trying to you know, blow my job, but at least for me, it's really hard to mess them up, yeah. unless it's really bad decals, which you can get. Mm -hmm. And also, it's it's the it's the it's the bit you can live stream without messing yeah, it up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I can do a live stream when I'm doing decals, no problem, because I can tilt to people in chat and I can witcher away to myself, and I'm just. So it's a bit I can live stream and get some content out of as well. But no, I love doing decals are very zen for me. I could just zone out and get me podcasts mm. on. I've got 900 hours of the Skeptic's Guide to the Universe to listen to, so decals are always a happy time for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's when the model actually starts to come to life is when you lay down the decals real nice and you, you start to see that detail start to pop. Yeah, um, unless it's the full armor master grade unicorn, in which case there is a kind of giving up the will to live after a certain time. <laughs> yeah, all oh, oh, those Kotoki decals. <laughs> oh yeah, you got to love them. But there's a certain there's a certain trigger point at which you think, okay, I've I've done enough now. <laughs> Do we need more uh, tiny circles and tiny lines on this one panel? <laughs> <laughs> Well, the thing, the thing, but I, I do love the fact that when you get those, because you, because with with like Katoki decals, you never use them all because you do get past that point of I don't care anymore. <laughs> Which means you do build up a massive stash of little warning markers and little sort of you know chevrons. <laughs> I've got a huge stash of them things, and they go on everything. I've put them on all kinds of things, not just not just mm. Warhammer. Mm -hmm. uh, Gumbler, sorry, mm. I've got I've got Katoki decals on Warhammer kits. It's brilliant. Little markings everywhere. Fantastic. Nice. Well, so, so you put a Zeon symbol on a. Uh, it's like a Warhammer tank, or was it an yes. orc tank? Well, I'm actually doing. I'll get me Zaku. Let me get me get me Zaku out. I'm actually doing a Warhammer army that is Principality of Zeon themed. So oh, if I get my item, you might not see on camera, but this is a Z uh, 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 Zaku Imperial Knight. So it's painted oh, in standard oh, yeah. Zaku colours. It's covered in both Warhammer decals and Zaku decals. <laughs> uh, awesome. And the idea is, I'm building a whole army, so it'll be a whole Warhammer Imperial army many many thousands of points hundreds of models there'll be like three imperial knights one that one done as a zaku knackered and rusted there'll be a goof which will be blue shades and not quite battered but a bit worn and there'll be a bright red shiny one which will of course be char's imperial knight zaku because mm -hmm. i made up some fluff in my in my mind about how there's why there are zaku forces in the imperial in the warhammer universe there's a whole backstory i wouldn't bother asking it's going to be half an hour but basically they're in there and it's going to, the whole army is going to be zeon themed so there'll be dudes like wearing red uniform with white gloves and white boots for example similarly no, no. so yeah but using all the using all the the, the um zaku decals and warhammer stuff is like i'm breaking all the traditions this mm. <laughs> breaking all the rules this is fantastic i love it <laughs> sorry Go on, Simon. no sorry i was just gonna ask are you looking forward to the uh the bandai um space marine crossover thing oh yeah, yeah. That's that's the one thing I was watching your videos, Zach, and I'm like, go on, show the big space marine, show the big space marine. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's there, it may not have been there. Uh, those that don't know, Bandai are now working with Games Workshop. Yeah. Now I know um I know Max mm -hmm. Factory already do the Warhammer Heroes, which are the little sort of gash upon yeah. them, or mystery mystery box things. But Bandai are doing, I think it's in the is it figure arts, the figure arts line? They've got mm -hmm. a seven-inch tall space marine, mm -hmm. which it's not really 
my kind of thing because it's an action figure, not a kit. But I can still yeah. get one and paint it. But it would be awesome somehow if because I love I love Warhammer and I love Gumpler. I love the both equally. That I love all my children, Gumpler and Warhammer. <laughs> I'll fall into either shop and buy both. But if those two could get together and have lots of wonderful model babies somehow, I'd just be. <laughs> I'd be a pig in a big pile of his favourite substance. It would be amazing. <laughs> I don't know if they ever will, but if they do more, that would be absolutely fantastic. A master grade dreadnought or something would be oh, quite impressive. Master. Yeah, I mean, if oh god, they just oh man, you just oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I've got a little bit moist and everything now. Oh. <laughs> so, there's so much that Bandai could because I know I know Games Workshop are very careful over their IP. They don't want people making stuff you could play on the tabletop because that's what they do. Mm. Um, and I, because in my mind, the two best model kit manufacturers are Bandai for the push fit stuff and Games Workshop mm. for the traditional blue kits. That mm. nobody beats them for quality on either side. Mm. They're obviously not going to step on each other's toes, but if Bandai could somehow build or make kits of stuff in the Warhammer universe that's not tabletop compatible, but like imagine uh, a Bandai Imperial Knight or a Bandai um, Titan. <gasps> Oh my gosh! <laughs> don't, don't pay three thousand pounds to Forge World for this six foot tall resin monstrosity. <laughs> this master grade kit from Bandai that's that big and looks like the absolute bees. Oh man! So if those two can get together and have lots of wonderful plastic babies. I'd be just. Oh, I'm um... of savory. <laughs> uh, oh gosh! Well, I I hate to we're. I'm out at time i hate to cut this short this has been great fox having you on you're a champ and great fun to talk to thank you yeah. i've absolutely loved being yeah. on it's been brilliant oh man we'll have to have you on again another time this has been yeah. fantastic. when i when i came on i thought what am i going to talk about i know like three things about gunplay and that's about it that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well um okay we'll go around and we'll say our final final goodbyes let everybody know where all of us can be found um simon you want to head off again yeah, sure. Um, you can find me on uh, GundamUK.com and here on YouTube as GundamUK. And Zach, you can find me here on this channel and sometimes on Instagram and Twitter and my Facebook page. Those would be the best ways. And uh, I always forget to mention this at the top of the video when I should. When there's more people <laughs> now that we're at the end of the video, I'll remind you guys about the current contest that's ongoing now, the uh, Mac K in Gundam contest that I announced uh, with Lincoln there while we were in Shizuoka as well. Our uh, 1 a.m. in a dark street with the <laughs> uh, <for a> video. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that was at 1 a.m. I just thought it was nighttime. That was great. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was pretty late. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway. Well, Ryan was like half passed out in the convenience store next door. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, oh, yeah. It's ongoing uh, somewhere. And uh, Asaki asked in, in the chat, we were, were we drunk? Not really. Ryan was very drunk. Link and I were like, fine. Or it wasn't that bad. If you remember uh, it, it wasn't that good a party. <laughs> yeah. We were totally well enough to record a 10 minute video without messing up too bad. So. It's okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, the, the contest is ongoing, so check that out if you guys want. The, the theme of the contest is uh, mixing elements of uh, Machine Cleaver and Gundam universe, Gunpla universe things. So you can like, uh, make a Machine Krieger kit uh, look like it's something out of the Gundam universe or vice versa, a Gundam kit that looks like it's something out of Machine Krieger or some, some sort of combination of the two. So. It's a really pretty interesting idea, I think. Uh, not getting as many entries as I normally do just because of the nature of the, the contest. Obviously being a little bit more uh, niche, I think. Uh, but uh, it seems like, and I've heard this from Lincoln as well, uh, that uh, Machine Krieger just in general is on the rise in popularity slowly. Uh, seems that way. Yeah, so I think it's a good time to just kind of try to spark something with some people to, to try it out. So uh, yeah, the contest has started and, and there's still plenty of time to enter. So if any of you guys watching, or those of you guys, or you guys, if you want to enter, still plenty of time to enter that. So that's it, yeah. Yeah, cool. And Timbo, off you go. Yeah, man. 
<clears throat> uh, hey, you guys, you got, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, um, uh, here on my YouTube channel every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. See me build this little guy, uh, yes. and then his counterpart, hopefully soon. Uh, yeah. <laughs> And then uh, every other Friday, we do uh, kind of a group build called Mechanism. We just had one last night, which was um, uh, just an amazing amount of fun. Um, so check that out. And then also, too, we just got, ba boom, the Mecha Decal oh, 001, um, our collab with uh, USA Gundam Store, um, did the full-on demo on Monday's live stream uh, for these, compared them to Q, and spoiler alert, ours are better. No uh, way. Wow. Yeah. Dude, the Shocker. clarity, the clarity and everything on these, it just kicks Haiku's ass. What? Uh, that's no what? Wow. That's wow. No uh printed by Cartograph uh in Italy uh to just exacting specifications. Uh and I am just full blown over the moon with these. And um the moment you said cartograph, any argument against is now gone because cartograph oh. is making the best decals. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're uh, absolutely amazing. Uh, I knew they were going to be good, but I didn't know they were going to be this good. Um, so, uh, yeah, every every little bit, even the text, and we went like full blown super zoom on these things. Text down to 0. 0.15 millimeters in height, fully legible, fully readable. Uh, it, yeah, it blows my mind. It blows my mind. So we're real happy with your advertising, those. Your advertising could just be. They're printed by Cartograph. Any questions? <laughs> All right. You know, surprisingly, a lot of people don't know about Cartograph. I didn't know, yeah. Yeah, mm. a lot of people don't know about them. But those that do, mm. boom, it, you know instantly it's it's quality. So, uh, yeah, so eight ninety nine on uh, USA Gundam Store ships worldwide. Get them while you can. So That's, that's, that's great. Oh, and Mecha Army represent. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, new I've got to get one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll save guests for last. My name is Josh Rodera, of course, and you can find me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. And you can buy my artwork on my joshrodera.com website and my PDF book, Big Old Zeta Books, still for sale there. Um, so, yeah, check that out anytime and message me anywhere. Say hi. I like chatting about anything. Um, and Fox, spruik your stuff again. Let us know where everybody can find you. Yeah, uh, you can find me on the Facebooks and the Twitters and God help me on the Instagrams that I don't understand because I'm not 18, but I do my best. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously on the YouTubes as Model Making Guru. Um, and I do have a website, modelmakingguru.com that I occasionally update. Uh, yeah, it's... I forget. I just, I've got a lot of things, you know. I'm very busy. <laughs> but um, yeah, do come along. I do... Um, I, might do so, I might be doing some more live streams on this. I've done a series of, for the love of God, come and help me keep me company while I denub de and sand all this stuff. I'll be <laughs> more live streams next week. Is it's that the title be... of the series? I should make it just for the love of God, come and help me keep me company. Wait, I love it. <laughs> I mean, I've done three so far. And I've only, I did one the other week and I sanded like about four parts. So it's not really working, but uh, <laughs> I, like, I just talked to the chat for three hours. Uh, yes. <laughs> but I'm working on that. Uh, after that, I'm going to do the big, perfect Grey Millennium Falcon. Mm. Uh, and then when that's done, I haven't. Uh, I'm going to make an announcement here, but it's not really relevant to anybody watching. But I haven't announced it anywhere. Um, I'm going to be doing the Diagostini 118 scale X-wing. Oh my god! Just contacted me and said, "Would you like to have all the things and film it for us?" And I'm like, "Okay." Wow. <laughs> so man, my thought process. scale. Holy well, shit! I thought, you want to send me a thousand pounds worth of kit? Okay, yeah. I, can, I can go for that. Oh, I was <laughs> freaking out at you mentioning the Perfect Grave Falcon. And then oh, you yeah, said yeah. that. Oh, my I mean, gosh. Well, the sad thing with the Falcon is it's for my sponsor's e-model, so that's got to go back to mm. them when it's finished. It'll be the fourth yeah, yeah. one of the fourth Falcon. But, but yeah, uh, D'Agostini asked me if I'd do it and film it, so I'm like, okay, I might not fit out my desk. Wow. It's about that <laughs> wow. big. Oh, my gosh. About that long. Wow. It's wings about that. So that's that's cool. That's They're amazing. So oh, yeah, like, yes. and I'll be, I do a live stream every Sunday, Warhammer Sundays, if you like Warhammer. Mm -hmm. I do a 3 p.m. on UK time, I do a Warhammer Sunday live stream. Cool. Well, man, thanks for, thanks for making all the content for everybody. We love it. I've been watching you for years before I'd even met you, like, here, um, and I've just enjoyed the stuff. So, man, thanks so much. No, my pleasure. Thanks to you guys as well, because, yeah. you know, Thank you. when I was first starting out at Gunpla, it was all your guys' content that was telling me what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> like, what is your Gunplas? I don't know what this is. <laughs> I'm learning now, I'm learning. So, yeah. Back to oh, you guys. Man.
Thanks for, thanks for coming on the show, dude. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. And uh, thanks to Alex in the chat from moderating. I've been seeing you've been doing a lot of work tonight, so we really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. yeah, good work. Absolutely. I have to apologize to Alex yeah. if any of my regular followers have caused chaos in chaos. That's what they do. Somebody said before, um, somebody said before, like, um, oh, um, something like Fox Fox, and I'm like, who's Fox? And they're like, uh, it's the British guy in the red shirt. And I'm like, ah, oh, geez, they totally, they totally miss my sarcasm. And like three people were like, no, he's he's Fox, he's model making guru. <laughs> yeah, they I think it. a couple of people are coming chat and said, wait, what, what's Fox doing here? What? <laughs> oh man um okay well and thanks to everybody all the viewers and everybody in the chat it's always great to have you guys here watching along chatting along with us hopefully you've enjoyed it check us out next month we'll let you know when the next episode is going to be on um and i think that's about it everybody so until next time catch you later and here we do some animated gif movements till we stop being live bye guys see you bye <laughs>